What is up, guys? This is the sports show, Brad Walker, and welcome inside the Walker Report on a Thursday night. Yes, guys, we are getting one day closer to the weekend. Everyone is having a good week out there so far. And next week, guys, is Thanksgiving. How fast the year has gone by. Jeez at least it's gone by quick. But, guys, uh, the Walker Report is part of In The Zone Sports Talk Radio. And if you want to get some gear, guys, head on over to uh, squidlocker.com. Type in In The Zone Sports Talk Radio. The website will present itself, and you can order your Zone gear. The holiday is coming. Buy some for your family, friends, and sports. Some Zone gear. We also are sponsored by Creating Zen Spaces, a local choice in St. Petersburg, Florida, for house cleaning, or, uh, organization decluttering, and pet sitting. It's about finding peace within you, adding comfort to your life. We are also sponsored by B&B Graphics and more. They guys uh, are part of custom tumblers, coffee mugs, t-shirts, vinyls, and guess what? The holidays are here, guys. Santa cookie plate, milk for Santa, food for reindeer plate, customs as well. Uh, talk to Rebecca. If she is the one you want to talk to at B&B Graphics and more. Guys, mention me and get 10% off your order. Uh, when you do order, you can order two ways, either through the Facebook page, which is B&B Graphics and more, or you can email them at B&B Graphics and more at gmail.com. Well, again, like I said, welcome in, guys. I'm going to bring on my co-host here just in a few seconds. Welcome in, guys. And let me go ahead and bring both of my gentlemen on here. How are we doing this evening, gentlemen? Hey, Lewis. Bradley, how are we doing tonight? Adam. So what is going on, guys? Anything, uh, anything interesting out there before we start our show? Oh, oh, same thing. Things. My hair's a mess. Cover that up. <laughs> All righty then. Okay. Nice touch. Man. Nice touch. <laughs> so, gentlemen, we'll go ahead. We'll go ahead and jump into this. We're going to start with uh, the NBA. Um, I guess uh, earlier they said they were going to. Um, they've released their uh, structure and format for the 2021 season. The yes. season again will begin on December 22nd to feature a 72 game season. Um, each team will play three games against each interconference opponent, 42 total games per team, with each pairing featuring either two home games and one road game or one home game and two road games. Um, all five teams from the division will play in all five teams from another interconference division twice at home. Well, that is very confusing. <laughs> each yeah, team. Very, about as clear as mud. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. This will be the – I know they're not having any – the All-Star break is scheduled to take place between March 5th and March 10th, yes. but there will be no All-Star game. Did I read that correctly? There will be no All-Star game this year? Did I see that, or are they still going to have it? It says right here that the pre – yeah, it says preseason games start from December 11th to 19th. And, geez, that's coming up quick, guys. That's in a couple weeks. Holy yeah. cow. Um, yeah. Yeah. December 22nd starts yeah. the first half of the regular season. Yeah. The, then you have March 11th starting the second half of the season. The play-in tournament begins on the 18th, and the playoffs will go from May 22nd to July 22nd. So okay. Two the playoffs? Wow. That's a lot of playoffs. One day before the Olympics start, too. Yeah. Well, well, what's, what, what's, what's your guys' opinion on the whole like new structure for – uh, the NBA this season could be interesting. Well, you're, not, you're not missing that many games, you know. It's only you're missing ten games from it, so it's not like not it's even. Big, you know, and it's not games. even ten games. They're playing seventy-five, from what I was reading earlier. Seventy-two, actually. Still, Is that's not you know, you're not missing much. So I think okay. it works. I think it works out great. You know, right? Um, you know, I'm just still a little bit, just a little bit confusing. But somehow the structures are going to work. You know, three with. Uh, one side and like uh, four on the other. That, that does seem a bit confusing and whatnot. So the structure does sound yeah, a little I, guy, but uh, you know, I think once the schedule, the season gets once rolling, the season I, gets rolling, yeah, once the season gets going, yeah, okay. I think I think it'll kind of fall into place and we'll kind of get a feel for it and it'll be all right. Oh yeah, sure. So, I mean, sure. if this is who, if we want NBA basketball, this is going to be this is what we're going to get. Yeah, right. well, I'm here to say. Two big stories outside of the schedule, and I will go over the draft that after the first two rounds of the draft that happened last night. Chris Paul gets traded to the Suns 
for from the Thunder for Ricky Rubio. And Clay Thompson is out for the season. He tore his Achilles. Um, so does that hurt the Warriors in any way, shape, or form? It doesn't oh, help them. Okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. just when we thought that, you know, that Thompson was going to bow back for his injury and the Warriors were going to, you know, maybe, you know, make a run back at the Western Conference. Because I thought this yeah. was just a hiccup. But now you're back to square one again. And I don't see how you're going to – because Thompson carries that team. Mm-hmm. And without well, it's, a, it's going to no, be another, no. uh, you know, I think maybe a subpar year. Well, I'll okay. take my work. I right? swear so I see it. Yeah, I agree. And you, I mean, then you have Chris Paul going to a young Suns team. I like I, that move. The, you, is yeah. it, are you guys okay with the move, or is that good for him? Good for the Suns? Well, it's good for. It's good for the Suns. I like it. Okay. I think he went out of the Thunder anyway, so that's going to be their loss. But um, yeah, you know, so that's that's the thing there. I mean, I don't know what they're going to do without him because you know, he, you know, he was a big he was a big part of that team and. Now he's going to the Suns, which are by no means a contending team at this point, but maybe he can help him, you know, up on the offense a bit. Now, are we talking about the new Chris, the old Chris Paul, the new Chris Paul? That's not what I know. No, no, I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> well, then also, too, you have Anthony Davis opting out of his deal with the Ooh. Lakers. Do you think they still sign him, even though he opted out of that? Uh, no. It all depends no. on okay. if they resign him, probably. Okay. I, I think he wants more money. I think he'd sign for 30 mil. Stay in L.A.? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, what are you if waiting for? not, about? if he goes somewhere else, I could see him going to New York. Okay. The Knicks? Yeah. Ooh, I like it. I like it. I, I, I thought you might like it. Uh, I just think, uh, you know, kind of wanting to be big man on campus, you know, be big star. But Chicago... I still think Harden could end up in Chicago. I think that – I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I think it would be a good fit for him. I heard Philadelphia. Philly, huh? Yeah, mm. that was the rumor I heard that, you know, I, Harden's going to go to Philadelphia. Not- I heard uh, Brooklyn, too, is what I've been hearing. That's yeah. the big – I don't like him in, in uh, the, with the Nets. Uh, Kyrie and KD and Harden? Yeah. That doesn't sound good. I also think if AD jumps ship, Harden could go to LA. Yeah, yeah I can the Lakers see that. or Clippers? Uh, Lakers. Uh, the Lakers. Good. No point in going to one to choke artists. Uh, right. <laughs> but uh, no, 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 no. Let's be fair. He'd fit in pretty good in in uh <laughs> with the Clippers. <laughs> Real. <laughs> well, he does have a tendency to choke. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Another three-run lead evaporated, folks. By the Clippers, what a shock! Oh my goodness! Okay. <laughs> All right. right. Okay. The season's over. The NBA, the NBA draft, or well, the first two rounds were held last night. So here, uh, here, there, here. I, the, I don't mean to c- cut you the, off, but there's more right. than two rounds. I thought there was only two rounds of the NBA draft. Two rounds. Two. There's two. Yeah, okay. I think two was right now. Round two is going on right now, right? Is that what it is? Yeah. Okay. Yes. So this is round one's grades from last. This is from Yahoo, guys. Again, this is, again, someone's opinion. Someone wrote the article. This is not my grades or anything like that. They gave the Minnesota Timberwolves a B for drafting Anthony Edwards. Um, they gave Golden State a B plus for drafting James Wiseman. That's the rookie out of Memphis. Yes. They drafted, right. um, they gave the Hornets an A minus for drafting LaMelo Ball, who I heard Whoa. was was the best uh, all around player. Um, that was on ESPN today. They said that he was the best all around player in the draft. Um, drugs they gave, are bad. They gave Don't do the drugs. Team, uh, the Cavaliers a C. The Hawks an A. Pistons a B plus. The Knicks a C plus. The Wizards an A. Phoenix a C minus. And San Antonio a B. Sacramento an A, uh, the Pelicans a B plus, the Celtics a C plus, the Orlando Magic a B minus, the Mavericks an A, the Heat B, Philadelphia A minus, Utah a D plus. They got the worst grade I think of anybody. Denver Nuggets B plus, Thunder B, Raptors a B plus, the Memphis Grizzlies a B, Portland Trailblazers C, the Rockets a C plus, and the Clippers who didn't 
They got a B, the Pacers a B minus, the Nets C plus, the Bucks a B, and then of course the Lakers didn't have a grade because they didn't have a pick. So no pick for them. So did anything jump out at you guys last night, Lewis? I know you're a Knicks fan. I what wanted to hear how I wanted to get Lewis's pick? thoughts. Yeah. You mean on our pick? Oh, could yeah, I, any, yeah, yeah. Could have anything better? I mean, that was that was a, that was a great pick for us. I, thankfully, they're able to move up. You know, they moved up to the only the eighth spot, and they were mm -hmm. able to get one. So uh, I'm 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 very pleased with that. I think it's gonna be a great it's gonna be a great fit for us, especially on offense. I mean, they were supposed to be picked lower, but they were able to able to move up, and uh, that's gonna help us a great deal. I mean, I can't wait for the season now with with Obi coming in. I mean, it was mm. great with he had a great he had a great season with Dayton, and I think maybe there there could be some brewing here for the Knicks. Oh boy, I'm wait I I can't wait for December twenty second now. I believe it. Yeah, that I was mean, really. There were I mean there were people that liked the pick. Um, Stephen but, A. Not one of them, <laughs> according to his lecture on course. first day. But um, I gotta mind know, my hands here on the air. Him, what's good about him, Lewis, is he's a box office type of guy. He led yes. the he led college basketball in dunks at Dayton. That's going to be exciting. It's going to put butts in the seats when there could be butts in the seats. But yes. that's going to help the Knicks in the long run, in my opinion. Now, now wait, you said Stephen Smith doesn't like it? He didn't like it. He wanted them to draft uh, a guard, not a point, not a – He wanted I can them to just hear him. Why? Why did you choose him? Why are you under a guard? No, what are yeah, you trying to do here? <laughs> You can go on ES. You can go on and, and watch. I watched it the, the, this afternoon at work before I got on here, and I'm like, "Yep, I got to bring that up to Lewis because I know you know Stephen A's a diehard Knicks fan. Every move the Knicks make, he makes a comment about it. So I had to bring oh, that yeah. up. Oh yeah, forgotten me. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm I'm just saying I'm not the world's biggest basketball fan, so I just I I don't follow it like you know I do with the NFL or the NHL or Major League Baseball even. But I like basketball well enough. Um, Okay. I'm gonna go. Uh, this may be bold, uh, but I think Lamelo Ball is it Lamelo or Langelo, whichever Ball no. brother it was. Yeah, uh, is the next uh, Darko Melichick. Hmm. All right, they, they predict him to be a super. They said that he picked you know being a small town there in Charlotte. But then think about this: Michael Jordan drafted him. They were talking about this today. Yes. You know, you have LaMelo Ball being drafted by Michael Jordan. You have Lamar Ball mm -hmm. being drafted by Magic Johnson. So, obviously, those two know how what basketball is all about. So, obviously, they saw something in them that both of them went in the top three in the picks in the draft. So, yeah. that's interesting how that works. And they probably should have kept looking. <laughs> I think so, too. I, uh... Eli, what were you thinking? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I don't know. It comes with the baggage, right? A, a, uh, a daddy ball, right? That's where. Yeah. It's uh, right? okay. Well, Lavar's been living vicariously through his kids for the last half decade, so. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> there is that. Yeah. It's SX. It's uh, SX baggage. Yeah. 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 No, that's true. That's true. I, I, I can agree with that. All right, gentlemen. Well, we'll go ahead to boxing. Um, I actually watched this fight the other night. The Terrence right. Crawford fight. I, uh, he knocked out Kelly Brook in the fourth round, and it looked like Brook, in the beginning of the fight, was taking it to yeah. Crawford a little bit. But Crawford figured it out real quick, mm. and you saw a typical Terrence Crawford boxing match where he pummels the guy to death, and, you know, that's the way it is. Um Again, with him, he hasn't had a big fight yet. I mean, he hasn't gotten Pacquiao, you know, any of those guys in that weight class. Is it is it time now for Terrence Crawford to get a fight like that? You know, is it is it is it time? I mean, I you it's, know they it is time. It's time to bring out. I mean, he's thirty seven to zero with twenty eight wins via knockout. I mean, I, you know, it's got to be that. Why time. wouldn't he get a doesn't he have a belt? Yeah, he's the welterweight champion. Uh, yeah, welterweight champion. How old yeah. is Crawford now? Why wouldn't somebody want to? Crawford's thirty-three, so he's moving up there. Uh, in eight. Too much time left. You know, he better get up there. If he's gonna get a fight, he better get it soon. 
Yeah. Yeah. That, the, that uh, the you know the other fight that came on before before I go into Mike Tyson because that fight's coming up too. Yeah, uh, next weekend. That doesn't make any sense. Tyson's fighting at his age. <laughs> The other fight that came on before that was a Mahoney Franco fight, and this again was for I don't know if you guys saw this or not. I caught the replay. Supposedly there was a a you know headbutt that I didn't see. I never saw an uh, an accidental clash of heads. Yeah, I didn't see it, but somehow the Nevada judges did because it was claimed to be a no decision. So Mm -hmm. I I think Mahoney got. Screwed. He got robbed. Yeah, I think he did get yeah. robbed after he lost the title to, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, Franco, I mean, that was what, round one? Yeah, round there one. Was a, there was, round a, one. it was in the ring ruled a accidental clash of heads. Right. And, and it's, right. it's like, it's like in football, they're never going to overturn a spot call. So right. the referee made the call in the, in the ring. So they're not going to go back and reverse it because they're, they're not going to overrule the the referee, right. although there was no there was my opinion there was no clash of heads, and that okay. should have been they right. should have r- ruled that a two round two technical round knockout. Two. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, I, I wanted to know what you guys' opinion was on that because I wa- again I watched the Crawford fight that was the fight before that was on ESPN, and I wanted to know I got I brought that in there because I wanted to see what you guys' opinion was. I didn't see the I didn't see the, the what the referee saw, so I don't know how in the world they determined that. Um, so yeah, Mahoney got screwed in my opinion in that play. Agreed. He must. Yeah, I think he did too. So the other thing, guys, before I get on to Tyson, would be, <laughs> and we keep bringing this up, and Deontay Wilder just continues to try to push and pull to get Tyson Fury back in the ring. ring. I guess. They're going to yeah. reconsider their 2021 plans to fight. Um, Fury is 30 0 and 1 with 21 knockouts. Wilder's 42 1 and 1 with 41 KOs. Um, seven rounds in February of this year. We all watched the fight. Um, talked about it, you know, shortly after. At length. Um, <laughs> I, I, I don't really see how in the world Wilder can win a fight if there is a third fight between these two. Yeah. Um, and the only thing that sucks right now, the guy that's actually waiting is Anthony Joshua. That'd be a much better fight. He's not getting a better fight either, but I'm just saying no, he's not kind of on the back burner here because these two can't decide do they want to fight? Do they not want to fight? I mean, I don't know. I'm just, you know, I don't think Wilder has a chance in hell, but that's just no. from the last fight. What happened between the I two still ones. think he lost the first fight anyway. Okay. Hmm. Uh, I don't think he hmm. didn't. Those two, the, the knockouts at the end of the round, uh, eleven and twelve, or both. I can't remember if they were both in round. If the one was in eleven, and or if they were both in twelve. Uh, excuse me. And uh, Fury getting up from both of them and dominating the rest of the fight the way he did, he shouldn't have lost. It shouldn't have. It's Wilder should have. Fury should have won that fight going away, in my opinion. Okay. I, I don't think I don't think that the two knockdowns were enough to overcome the the score advantage that Wilder ha, or Fury had occurred throughout the other ten rounds. I agree. I mean, I, I went back and watched the, the the first fight after the second one concluded, and I agree. I don't I don't think the knockout in the rounds eleven and twelve. You know, he got up from both of them, so it's not like he stayed on the canvas. He got up from both of them. So and 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 he didn't get up late or anything either. Right. Right. It, it wasn't right. like it, it wasn't like it was an, a ten eight round. Right. Um, yeah. and then and I had I picked I picked Fury to win the the second fight in ten. And of course, he won in seven. He won in seven. But the reason I said Fury was going to win is because is I watched the the Wilder Ortiz fight, which is the fight before uh, Fury too, hmm. and I just I just saw an old man in the ring with Ortiz. Ortiz was winning the fight. He was, it was, I had him up six to one in going uh, through, through, or five to one through mm-hmm. six in the seventh. And if it, if he hadn't, if he hadn't walked into a right hand, he was going to win that fight. 
in my opinion. I had him, he had done more work, he had thrown cleaner punches, he had landed better shots, and if he hadn't have walked into a right hand, he would have won the fight. Yeah. And that's the only way Wilder's going to win Tyson Fury 3, is if he, can get Wilder, if he can get Fury to walk into a right hand. And now Fury's 8-2 eight, eight, right hands and shrugged him off like they were nothing. So, I mean... Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping, and I mean, I guess for all boxing fans' purposes, you want to see it happen because you know it's going to draw a lot of attention as the second fight did. So I, you, you draw a lot of attention. I'd like to see it happen just to get it out of the way. Yeah. Move on to something else. Well, I mean, then, then, then it would, you know, then you would think it might be Fury Joshua. If Joshua wins his fight coming up, you would think it would be those two in the ring, and that would be an all English fight. You know, all yeah, hell of a fight. Yeah. So again, we'll go ahead, guys, and move on. Now, Tyson, I don't know if you saw the photos of him online. He does look pretty good for his age. I will give him that. Oh, yeah. At 54, okay. at 54 years old. Um, the, the fight is coming up uh, the 28th. So that's what? That's next Saturday. Saturday. Next Saturday? Next All right. Saturday. Okay. I can't believe it's going to happen. I still can't believe it's going to happen either. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, for, for, that, for that point, I mean – Again, what what <laughs> what are we expecting in this fight? Oh, really? I, an eight round S show. What <laughs> between two guys who are up there in age that were great, <laughs> great in their primes, but never, you know, I don't know. It, no, mm. I, I, uh, I I don't. Yeah, I I I don't I don't know what to expect. What to expect uh, from I don't it? Think I want to know. <laughs> if I uh, if I have any money, I'm gonna see if I can sneak off to the local cigar lounge and uh, go catch that fight. If they're if they're gonna be if they're gonna be picking it up, okay. Yeah. That's where I went and watched the uh, Wilder Fury too. It was a lot of fun. Well, if do you think gonna... anybody have any really interest in, in the Tyson fight? I mean, really, I mean uh, the novelty yeah. of it all. That's gonna say, Louis, the novelty of it all. They'll watch it because of because of who he was. Yep. Uh, and, yeah, who he was, not who he is now. Yeah. I uh, well, I want to see if he's got a, if what he's got left in the tank. Okay. If he goes out there and he has and he throws eight rounds and he just throws he's going out for blood because that's how Tyson fights. Right. And Tyson remember, fights that, 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 just one thing though, fifty five in human years is hundred and twenty in boxing years. So I don't know how that's gonna But how many different. years how how many years is it in Mike Tyson years though? <laughs> Um, I, I still, I still think in his prime, Mike Tyson was the best who have ever done it. Oh, of course. I, I had pound for pound. The dude has got the thing about Mike Tyson is, as people think about his his hands, he had a, of course he had monster hands, and he could throw oh. bricks from either side. But he also had great footwork. He was a really technically skilled fighter. He had great head movement, so you couldn't he, he would. He could he could work his head so you could never lay a hand on him and he could work you know and he had that ability to work you to if you were right handed he'd work you so he could throw his left hand if you were left handed he'd work you so he could throw his right hand and he was a really tactical really smart fighter and the worst thing that ever happened to Mike Tyson was Don King. He'll tell, well, you saw that. Oh, yeah, you watch, of course. You, you watch a documentary that he did. I watched on HBO. He'll tell you straight up that Don King is like the worst thing to walk the planet. I mean, yeah. he, he'll tell you that that was the worst decision he ever made. Yeah. The worst decision he ever made was to allow Don King to take over his, you know, his boxing. Really? Yep. Yeah. Little, little nose candy never hurt nobody. <laughs> Louis, real, quick, real quick, kind of off topic. Ralph, Ralph Garcia just, I don't know why he told me this. He tells me, he says he wants to let you know that the Yankees suck. I don't know what that no, means. Really? I don't know what, what that means. So when you next time you talk to him, let him know no, that I can do that. Probably I know exactly what it means. I mean, I've been, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say it here. Okay. Well, we'll you've been, you've been, you been, we get the baseball. We can talk about the Yankees if you want. <laughs> Lewis, Lewis, do you're you're what 28, 29, somewhere in there. Fifty. <laughs> you've been hearing right. Yankees suck. You've been hearing Yankees suck for what 50, 60 years now? <laughs> 40, 45. 45. 45 years. Okay. 
<laughs> our, our Yankees suck for 45. <laughs> like that. and, then, like that. and that's because you can only remember 45 years ago. I can't remember you before the age of five. That's, 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 that's the truth. Five. He was five at the time, so. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I, I can't. remember the 36 pennant race, though, when they, when they won on a home run. I do remember that. Well, I mean, yeah. You know, we'll talk about the Yankees, but I, it, it, <laughs> it, the, the next thing, guys, is the UFC and their okay, I wanted to... Dana White thing, where yeah, they, yeah, they I guess this again is a Yahoo Sports article, and it says despite pandemic, live sports are back thanks in large part to Dana White. Um, now he was the one guys who again, as we all know, he pushed for UFC to continue. Mm. To schedule yes. fights, of course, we had Fight Island in Abu Dhabi. They fought here in Jacksonville in Florida. They fought out in Vegas. So they've been fighting around. They fought in Brazil in front of an empty crowd in Brazil. So I don't. I mean, I know they've done that. Um, do you guys give a lot of credit to why sports is back? Because Dana White continued to push for things to come back. Is that do you do you praise him for that or? Well, how do you how because, do you feel about that? Well, I mean, the UFC was the first sport to come back, but I didn't think it was going to happen because you know everybody complained. Everybody's thinking about well, you have to keep the distance with you know being so far apart. When UFC, you know, and wrestling are, have the most contact, so that was taking you know you know like the biggest risk of all because you know you can body slam them and that's not that's not keeping distance. Uh, those are kicking where it counts, uh, whatnot, you know. And you have see your your punching each other's guts out, and there's no distance in that. Also, the rush trying to break you up. So, I do gotta give him credit. At the same time, though, I thought he was nuts, you know, for taking that big of a risk. Because you know, what if one of your fires does con does contract? Uh, you know what? And then it's gonna be on your head. Yes, I refer to the coronavirus as you know what. That's fine. Or, yeah, or that's that fine. thing is as, as I have to call it. Too. We can say that. Though. Yeah. So. At the same time, you know, it's kind of like, well, yes, it's good that sports did come back because it did follow the path. Everybody came back, football, basketball, and hockey, baseball. But at the same time, it was a very dangerous risk because what if they would have got the virus and would have died a few a few days later? Sorry, it sounds so morbid. Then that would have, you know, been a rather destructive path and everything would have been off completely. Because all yeah. it would take was one death from that sport and – the sports will be turned upside down, and I don't think we have anything right now as we as we speak. Speaking of which, the uh, Cardinals and uh, the Seahawks are getting uh, uh, Yes. Yeah. Um, no score. Uh, in the first quarter. I was watching the college game, and I I just had it in the background. Um, I will say that uh, told Tulane and uh, oh, Tulsa. Yeah, yeah, right. Right. I like yeah. I like these games because it's. These are either they're going to be terrible or they're going to be great. Nothing in between. <laughs> um, but uh, game, I guess. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. I, I will say what I will say about Dana White is that you got to you got to give him credit where you know credit where credit is due. He paved the way. He showed mm -hmm. us that he showed the rest of the world that you could do contact sports in a safe manner. You could do the with the prop with the proper amount of testing, and with the you know with a bubble atmosphere, um, and with containment, you could have live sports. And, you know, it was different when 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 NASCAR came back because you know you've got forty. You know, you you don't have to have all these people making close contact. Everybody can socially distance. You don't have to be on top of each other. You're not competing right on top of each other. Plus, all the drivers are racing cars, so they're all in their own vehicles. And so you don't have, and then everybody, everybody goes to their same pit box and, and then everybody goes out of the track, you know, this crew leaves, this crew leaves, this crew leaves, this crew leaves, and everybody kind of goes out in a orderly fashion and everybody walks out, you know, whereas in martial art, mixed martial arts, um, you have that, that, you have that physical contact, not only between the two fighters, but between the two fighters and the referee and all the other thing and the corner men that you wouldn't have in a motor sport. Yeah, but they kind of like in close contact when they're like, you know, right up trying to get, you know, trying to get each other's way, and they were uh, crashing into the wall. I mean, you know, that's no. kind of like contact right there. 
That's not, but that's not direct contact with another person, though. That's what well, I'm. See, car. see, when you, when you, when two cars come together, you know, they're not. They, they generally don't come together on. You, this, this is a really bad way to have the two cars come together. Is driver's side in compact, and plus they're wearing helmets. They've got full fire suits on. The, the, the crews can. Okay. The crews are all wearing masks. You know, and even when you have it, when you're servicing the car, you know, you go to your spot on the car, you do your job, you go around to the other side, you do your job, and then you go back behind pit wall and you you spread out and you stay socially distanced. Unlike where it's a mo- unlike martial arts or are you boxing, where you know oh, no. your cornerman, if if you if you have a cut on your your face, you got to go to your corner and get it cleaned up. And so I will give right. credit where, and so and that allowed for the NFL. The MLB, the NHL, and uh, and the NBA to see how to do to have a a uh, protocol. Yes. All right. I, I you know I I you know I have to give credit to Dana White as well. I I think again, Lewis. Yeah. If it had backfired, we would have no sports as we as we speak. And thank God it didn't end up that way, and we got what we got. Now he does insist that we. I, I want to say, did I see that they finalized McGregor Poirier? Isn't that that fight's going to happen? Right? I believe yeah, we have. It, it mm. just finalized right before we went on the air. Now that's going to come up in what in January of next year? The I believe so. Yeah, the, well, it's February. But okay, February, January, something like that. Okay, so that fight has been, and, and he still believes that Khabib is not fully retired. He's going to come back. Agreed. That's not, so either. Okay, I, so you uh, both I, I, for that. We said it. I said it last week. Money talks, or actually two weeks ago now. Money talks for the right amount of money, he'll be back. Okay. Right. All right. Yeah, I mean, I I agree with that. I think there's a pay per view coming up on Saturday, right? Isn't that right? There a UFC match yeah. that's coming up this weekend, I believe. I don't know where. Right. Exactly. I'm not sure. Uh, I think they say in Las Vegas because I have an article here where Gloria DePaul, I think she's facing off with uh, Shanko. Oh, yeah, women's. Yeah, that, I think that's the that's the main event is those two that are uh, fighting in that. I don't know. That's what I, I saw earlier today. All right. Well, I know one topic that a lot of we a lot don't like to talk about, but I'm going to bring it up because there is a pay per view on Sunday. And that's the Survivor Series. The WWE yeah. has the Survivor Series yeah. paper this Sunday coming up. Here are the here is the card. I like this. I like this. I like the first match. Um, you got Drew McIntyre versus Roman Reigns. Those are your two champs uh-huh. facing off against each other. Um, yeah. uh, we all. I, I did. McIntyre did win the belt back on Raw this past week. Over Randy Orton, which I think now you can see Orton go fighting Bray Wyatt. I would believe yep. that fury, that fight will continue. But what, I mean, what do you guys think about McIntyre versus Reigns and then having the two champs fight facing off in that Survivor Series? No, that's it what all, it's a risk. Yeah, it is a risk. Look, the Survivor Series, and you know, Reigns, of course, was a good. But mm, I think he's a little bit past his prime, though. Well, I think the whole thing with, with him, Lewis, the whole story that I've been seeing is they're going to set him up for the Rock at WrestleMania. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's that what I've heard. I've, I've I you know I've watched some w, uh, WWE channels on YouTube, and a lot of yeah. people are pointing the finger to say that you're going to see the Rock against Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. Now, whether he has a belt around his waist, mm-hmm. I doubt that because you're not going to give the championship to The Rock, who is not really in wrestling anymore no. after now. And he's really an owner of the XFL. Uh, I won't even bring up that, but he is the owner of the XFL now. And, you know, uh, and so. What what if you what if you did put the belt on him? And you had him drop Huh. And you had him drop at the Cena at at WrestleMania. Well, that, means, that means that Cena would be the he would pass Ric Flair for the for the record if that was the case. I mean that would be great in my term, but I don't know if 
that, I mean, I know records are meant to be broken, but that one seems to like they don't want it to happen. I don't know why. That's just me. I don't know. I could be wrong when I say that, but, you know, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know either. I just it's just a thought. But, Lewis, the, the, the person that wrote the article says that Roman Reigns will win the match. That's what they're predicting. I see. They're predicting. And then the next one is the Survivor Series uh, match, and that is – Raw team is Keith Lee, AJ Styles, Sheamus, Braun Strowman, and Matt Riddle versus Kevin Owens, Jay Uso, King Corbin, Seth Rollins. And this is a TBD, so I don't know who the fifth person for SmackDown is going to be in that fight. I don't know who that is. I don't I haven't heard anything. Shane McMahon? I, ah, could be Shane McMahon. Yeah, somebody. It'll have uh. to be somebody on that. I mean you obviously can't say Drew McIntyre because McIntyre is going to be in the fight with Reigns. You're not going to put him in two matches. Yeah. So I don't know how they're what they'll do for that case. I don't know who they'll fit in in that match. <laughs> mm. The other one, guys, is the women's Survivor Series match, and that's Raw mm. is Nia Jax, Shayna Baszler, Lacey Evans, Peyton Royce, and Lana versus SmackDown, and there's. Bianca Belair, Ruby Riot, Liv Morgan, and two TBDs. So again, they haven't. I, I don't. Know, maybe if they haven't announced the. I don't even know who's on the rosters anymore. So. Yes. Then you have Asuka versus Sasha Banks for the title. Um. Then you have the New Day versus the Street Profits, and then Bobby I... Lashley versus Sami Zayn, and then the Undertaker's final farewell. 30 years, he's, I guess he's stepping away officially after 30 years. After 30 years, I think, guys, uh, time is due. I mean, you know. I he's mean, earned it. Yeah, yeah I agree. I well, agree. I, I was in high school. My goodness. <laughs> yeah, I, that, I as I was sick. Telling, that, well, as I was telling Lewis a couple of weeks ago, I, I think me and Adam were having this conversation. I told um, him that my dream match was always Sting versus Undertaker. And I think yes, that was going to be set up that way until yes. Seth Rollins hurt Sting's shoulder, and then that was history. But now, even if even if Undertaker wanted to come back, I don't want to see two 50-year-old guys in the ring. It's not going to be entertaining. No, it's, it's not. not. It's so, going to be yeah. awful. Yeah. Senior citizen, senior citizen wrestling. Yeah. Not my thing. That's you can you can say that. Yeah, I I, I <laughs> agree. It, it's good. I mean would you rather have him go out, guys, at Survivor Series or WrestleMania, The Undertaker? I'd rather, I guess, because of all his history at WrestleMania, I think it'd be a big yeah, thing. Yeah. I want him to go out wherever he's happy. If he if he's happy going out at if, if yeah. he's happy going out at Survivor Series, you know, maybe he wants to go out at Survivor Series so he doesn't overshadow the moment. You know, well, that's where he's some, here. So yeah, somebody's going to have, you know, somebody, if you go out at Survivor Series or if you go out at WrestleMania, excuse me, if you go out at WrestleMania, you're going to overshadow somebody's WrestleMania moment. You know, True. there's going to be somebody that's going to, their moment's going to be, because their moment's always going to be second fiddle to, to Undertaker's last ride. True. And so at Survivor Series, mm -hmm. you're not, oh, you're Survivor Series isn't putting somebody over, isn't putting, isn't, you're not having to bury somebody to put Undertaker over. True. Okay. Well, and also, too, you know, he did appear at Survivor Series, so it's fitting that he goes out in the same pay-per-view that he came into. So, yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree with that. All right, guys, let's go ahead now. We'll shift our attention to baseball. I guess hey. there are a couple new names that are added to the ballot this year, and that will be a Tim Hudson, a Barry Zito, Mark Burley, and Tory Hunter will all be on the ballot yeah. First nice. time. Now we know last year that the you had Jeter and Larry Walker go in. Um, yeah. You see, do you got do you guys see Burley, Hudson, Zito, or Hunter being first selections right off the bat? Any of those guys? Zito. Zito. Very Zito. Okay. Hunter. I want Hunter in in first ballot. I watched that SOB Patrol Center field at at, at the Metrodome for twenty <laughs> years. Uh -huh. And take away more home runs than I can count on both my hands. That's my a shoes Tigers off. fan talking. Lewis, that's a Tigers fan talking. It's a Tigers fan talking. Uh -huh. 
<laughs> we had him for we had him for a couple of years. The show. <laughs> but uh, okay. so you you said Zito definitely Barry Zito would be yeah okay. I would agree with that okay at Tim Tim Hudson no you don't think that's no I doubt that I would well Mark Mark Burley's got to be I would I would say he's a first ballot Hall of Famer Burley's got to be in there down the road right yeah, yeah. I would I would I would vote for him but it wouldn't break my heart if he didn't go in no okay. Okay. All right. So that was that was, and of course you still have the guys. You still got. I'm not uh, going. Kurt Schilling, Omar Vizquel, Scott Rowland, Billy Wagner, Gary Sheffield, mm. uh, Manny Ramirez, Sammy Sosa, Andrew Jones, Andy Pettit. Oh. You got to be in there sooner or You're later. not going to allow it. Hall of Fame. You're not going to allow it. And the baseball. I would vote. Like no way. We're not letting in someone who was a cheater in the Hall of Fame. And yeah. Sam Pete Rose, he'll never get in. No. no. Well, I mean, I, yeah, we we had that. I had that talk on the. I don't know. I don't know if you guys got to see it. I tried to post it to my my page, the show that I was on last Friday, where we were talking about the Yankees now Rushmore, mm -hmm. and um, we talked to. I talked. Yeah. I I got I got Roger Maris. I drew Roger Maris. And I told them, you know, when I was talking to them, I said, hey, I still consider Roger Maris the single season home run champion. I said he did it the right way. I didn't really know that he's still the American League champion. No one's passed him. If the National League was, of course, McGuire and, of course, then we now it's Bonds. But none of those guys did it in the yeah. American League. So Maris is still the American League single season home run leader. Right. But overall, I still think I could still consider him that – and I still consider um, – why can't I think of the guy? Hank Aaron. Name? Thank you. Hank Aaron as the all-time. So yeah, I agree. So here's my question. You have Andy Pettit who, again, was part of that whole steroid thing. Do you see him down the road getting in because uh, of the way – I mean, he did I, apologize. And, yeah. I the, the, the reason I would vote for him is, is because of the contrition. Okay. Uh, I think that – Unlike the other guys, unlike the Clemens, the Bonds, the uh, the Shillings, the the guys that acted like they didn't do anything, the Maguires, the Sosas, that didn't do acted like they didn't do anything wrong, and they were above the game. I I, I would I would say that Pettit's contrition won me over. Uh, yeah. Maybe it was insincere, but you know, a good sob story never never jerked my heart around. Okay. So so I would I would. Or four, you know. Yeah, yeah. And if you're not going to, you know, because Clemens can't go in because of, you know, I, it, it's the, you know, unfortunately, you know, mm -hmm. he, you know, the thing about Bonds and Sosa and Clemens and Schilling is they all had Hall of Fame careers until their, until their careers were ending. And then they started doing drugs and, and they had a second life of their career mm -hmm. and, you know, and they cheated. Mm -hmm. And you know, yes. I don't so much. I wouldn't so much care if the if it was just adults doing it and wanted to put their bodies through those things and, and wanted to deal with them. Okay, fine. You want to do that? Whatever. That's your business. Mm -hmm. You're not just putting you're you're putting young kids at, at risk because if you want to be, you know, if you're if you're a 14 or 15 year old and you want to be a baseball player, you got to hit home runs. You know, yes. and, and so. If you're not naturally gifted and you can you can get the you know you hear that the the big leaders the adults are doing these these drugs these steroids and they're hitting monster shots and you're some 14 year old and you're walking down the hallway of your high school and your pump's so full of what who knows whatever anabolic whatever the heck they can get off the shelf there and you blow your knee out just walking down the hall and you never play another another inning of baseball you know, just because because the seniors were doing it, because the college guys were doing it, because the pro guys were doing it, and we're not just talking about the MLB. We're not talking about major league. We're talking about low A, high A, double A, triple A. Everybody's right. doing it. So you got to start doing it as soon as you can. You have 14, 15, 16 year olds ruining their lives, chasing a dream because guys at the top are cheating. And that's why I can't. That's why I'll never. I'll never support a steroid user going into the hall. Exactly. 
these are kids that you know they, they look I mean they look up to these players as role models, but yet you see them cheating, doing the drugs and the steroids and things outside of that too. I won't get into the other gory stuff, but you get but you get the idea. And they want to be like them, but mm -hmm. you're hiring someone who uh, is cheating, and you know that's not really uh, how a role model should be. I mean, you know, it's not it's admirable. Not, it's not being honest. You know, you want to be like a Barry Bonds or a Sammy Sosa, which you know at the time we thought you know uh, no harm was done. You know, this is in the beginning of the steroid era. We didn't make much of it, but now that you know it's twenty years later. And you know it's become more, you know, more involved in the game, and that's something. That, and it does ruin the kids' lives. It may not be the game, but in the long term, it's really going to do a lot more damage than most people think. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I don't, you know, that I don't think the kids should, you know, get involved with. It's it's it's, it's bad enough. I mean, it's bad enough back in the old days when they were uh, the players were chewing the wacky tobacco, and you know that was that was bad. And smoking one, and that didn't do anything either. And of course, uh, well, Babe Ruth was uh, kind of a boozer. Yeah, we had we had those problems then too. You know, the booze, the tobacco, and, and and you know, kids were looking up to them too back then. You know, like you know, our parents' generation, our grandparents' generation. Yeah. But you know, of course, you had the media going after you. You know, every five, every time someone did something, so it was right. a lot more tamer back then. We had all the media blitzing. Oh, Babe Ruth was uh, drinking uh, three Budweisers in a. Uh, in uh, 45 minutes, uh, yeah, but you know, so you know, it's, it's a little bit different day with the media hounding, and that makes it even worse. Yeah, right. right. Well, here, here you go. You uh, yeah. no. If these guys receive less than five percent, they're going to be off the ballot. That would be Paul Canerco, Jason Giambi, Alfonso Soriano. Mm. Uh, do you see any uh, of them getting above five percent and stay on it, or do you think they're gone? Canerco uh, should go in. Again, had the displeasure of watching him play first base for 10 years. Mm. Freaking God. Tiger Killer. Tiger Killer. Nah, but the other... Who is the... Uh, Alfonso Seriano? And that's Jambi. A top, Jambi. Jambi. Jason Jambi is uh, absolutely not. Okay. Um, yeah. And Alfonso Serrano, I always thought he was borderline. Um, okay. Either way, I didn't... You know, I wouldn't have... Wouldn't have question it either way if they put him in I, yeah he, he did enough to get there if he didn't he didn't you know i can understand why they say he didn't do quite enough so, so you would take giambi over soriano i mean zero over, over giambi correct yeah, yeah I I would would be around. that's just me though yeah uh well it's the also the steroids too that's true mm. jason has the steroids i mean yeah. you know um So, mm -hmm. but then, yeah. So I agree with that. I mean, they're they're they've been talking about, of course, now free agency. So yeah. here's what the staff writers believe these these free agents are going to go. George Springer. Now, one of uh, two of them, two of the writers have him going to the Mets. One of them has him going to the Giants. The other one has him going to the White Sox, and the other one has him going to the Red Sox. Can't imagine him in Boston. Well, but that's a I don't I just that I can't. Yeah. I, wrap my head around um where do you think he'll go guys where do you think he'll end up you think he'll end up back in houston or do you think he goes somewhere else oh yeah he houston. was in the he was in houston uh, i was thinking he was in new york no i oh. think he'll leave houston you okay um what if he ends up in detroit hooks back up with hinge ah that's that's, that's a possibility that's a possibility Look at that uh, I just I don't really know. I haven't heard any. I I haven't really been watching hot stove yeah. or following the baseball as much as I do during the season. You know, the off season football in full swing. Um, right. But I I don't know. I can't say one. I don't think he'll go to the. I don't think he'll go to the. I think he stays in the AL. Yeah. I could I could see him going to New York. Honestly, the Yankees, not the Mets. The Yankees. Thanks. Okay. Yeah, I uh, agree with that. We have, have JT, uh, JT Ramudo, the uh, catcher. Uh, two of them are going to Philly. One of them has been going to the Mets, the Nationals, and the Mets. So two Mets, one Nationals, two Phillies. Where do you think he, he ends up after all said? Where done? was he last year? Yeah. Where Where was he last year? 
I don't know where JT Iowa Ramoto was. I don't know where exactly mm. he. Yeah, I don't recognize the name offhand. I he they heard of him. I want to say I want to say Philly, but I'm not 100 percent sure. I want to say yeah, he's with the Phillies. I don't mm. I don't remember. The next one is Trevor Bauer, and they have him with three of them have him going to Anaheim. The other two of them going to San Diego. So the Angels or the nah, he's with the Indians. So didn't he but, just yeah. win the Cy Young in the, in Cleveland? He did. Yes, he, he did. did. He just won the Cy Young. Yep. Oh. Yep, he sure did. I could uh, see him going to this. I could see him going to the Chicago. Then he Keep they the had. AL. Yeah. You think he'll stay in the AL? You yes. don't think he'll go to San Diego? Okay. All right. Um, well, it's not the next right. one. The next one, Lewis should know this one. DJ Lemayu. They have him all staying with yeah. the Yankees. He's not moving. That's what they have him down. I know uh, he's no, waiting. No. Keep him. Keep him. Yeah. Okay. You want to keep him? Keep him. Uh, the next one, guys, is Marcel. He also what? won the AL. Ba- he also um, won the AL Bang title last year too. Yes, mm. he did. The next keep one, guys, is Marcel Uzuna. And he's with the Braves, so they have three of them staying in Atlanta, one going to yeah. Washington, the other one going to Toronto to play with the Blue Jays. He ain't going anywhere. Staying no. in Atlanta. Watch yeah. the Braves next year because they're going to be they're going to be something. I think they're going to they're going to be a threat. They're going to be a big threat. I I wouldn't count out them making the World Series next year. So I wouldn't either, as long as they can fix whatever Braves, else Atlanta. Braves are on the move. They should have won this year. Probably. Um, the next one, guys, is Justin Turner, and then they have him staying with the Dodgers. They don't have him leaving LA. Yeah, no, I can't see him leaving LA. Okay. Yeah. Um, the next one is the other outfielder in Houston, Michael Brantley. They have two of them staying in Houston, two going to Chicago, the White Sox, and one going to the Atlanta Braves. He goes to Atlanta. Oh, That's a stacked out. team, man. Yeah. Look out. Um, again, I, I could see him. I could see him jumping ship for, for Chicago, maybe Detroit, you know, you got to think about a lot of these guys, you know, they're getting, you know, hinges in Detroit. Maybe he goes to Boston. Alex Cora is back in Boston. Um, you know, well, well, I could see him staying in Houston. We'll have to wait and see. Mm-hmm. And then the, I have one here, Lewis, they have Tanaka listed down four guys, four people have him staying in New York with the Yankees. And one of them has him going to the Mets to pitch for the Mets. Do you see him leaving the Yankees and going cross down to with the Mets? Nah. No, no I, I, I don't. Not really. But I, you know, and like I, like I said in previous shows, what's worse, going to your crosstown rival, or your division rival? I mean, that would be ugh. That right. be- especially as a free agent. Free agent, yeah. It's it's That's different a- if you get. Traded people are more like, oh, well, there's nothing you can do about it. You got traded, you got traded. Mm-hmm. If you were right. to just walk out the door, oh, you went well, well, you ran them all. Okay. Yeah, right. Speaking of the Mets, I don't know if you guys did hear, but Robinson Cano's out again. Yeah, I, I was best, so he's out for 52 games. So <laughs> there you go. The whole yeah, season, that's his career. He yeah. won't sign, he won't sign anywhere else. He's done. That should be his career. What a joke. <laughs> what a disappointment. What a, he had such a promising career 10 years ago. I thought he was the next great Yankee second baseman. He, uh, he was for a long time. Nick Jeter. Yeah. Yeah. Well, did we know? <laughs> if only we had a known. I put 10 bucks on it and made some money. <laughs> I would have been, I would have been 20. <laughs> <laughs> we go in together and we'll split it 15. Write this for the record, record please. <laughs> right. Uh, uh, all right, guys. Yeah, that that's the the ba- uh, now baseball. I'll move to golf again. This is where okay, I cool. I jump cool. in. Um, your show, man. What is Take your um, Dustin Johnson winning the Masters on Sunday? Proud of that. Congratulations. He won his second. He won his second major. Uh, set a course. Re- uh, set a uh, tournament record. Um, at Augusta National, um, he he was the only one that I saw that really didn't make mistakes. He also didn't look like Augusta beat him. Um, 
again, that golf course is tough even in November, as we saw. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean the the you know here's the thing with coming into the Masters over the you know that week that you know we all we were talking about was Bryson DeChambeau. That was the big talk. He had won the U.S. Open. He was coming in to Augusta to dominate. He almost missed the cut. So before you do all that shit talking, you better watch mm -hmm. where you're playing and who you're playing against before right. you start that up. Because, like I said, he was very, very close to missing the cut totally, and I would have laughed my ass off. <laughs> I don't, I don't hate sure. Bryson Jimbo by any means of the imagination. I just oh. don't like the fact that, and athletes in every sport do it. I, it's not just golf. Everyone does it. Everyone shit talks and they. Oh, yeah. It's really one, annoying. Either one, they back it up and they, it looks great, or two, they fall flat on their face. And that's what happened to him this yeah. past week is he fell flat on his face. So, big time. Yeah. So, to me, you know, Dustin Johnson winning, congratulations. Obviously, if you guys don't know, the past, the champion from the year before puts the jacket on. The new champion, so Tiger put the jacket on. He broke Tiger's record. He broke Tiger's record. That is correct. He broke Tiger's record. Um, and now, next year before the tournament starts, the champion gets to host dinner and he gets to have anything he wants. So, uh, yeah. yeah. The, first, the first year that Tiger won, he had hamburgers and cheeseburgers and milkshakes. So, oh, you cool. You you have, oh, geez, thanks a lot. Yeah, you can have anything you want. Uh, Just you know. So again, it depends on you. I, I'm gonna need a minute because <laughs> this this menu just keeps getting longer and longer. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's there's the question I asked. So if you were to win, what would you guys serve? I'll, I'll ask you guys. What, what what would you guys have for dinner for everybody? Anything you want, you can pick anything you wanted. Just tell me what you guys would would pick. Uh, take this one first, Dan. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I'm going to start with lobster for sure. All right. All right. I want lobster. I want Wagyu, grass-fed, you know, $100 a pound, Ang black Angus from, from Japan, fresh, medium rare. Oh, my God. I want, I want decadent, creamy mashed potatoes with chives and gold leaf and... I want to do it up, and I want a great, great big ass bottle of champagne. Cause okay. I'm gonna soak the damn room. We're gonna do it up right. Now I can only choose one, right? What's that? I can only choose one, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, because I have three, I have three favorites. I mean, I do like cheeseburgers. Oh, that's but fine. You can name all three. Go right ahead. It doesn't matter. Go right well, ahead. Cheeseburgers number one, you know. But, okay. uh, yeah. but I also like, um, you know. Uh, linguine and clams. Oh, I, that would be good too. I, I'm Italian, first of all, so oh, of course. And if you want to live dangerously, I do like fish, so I would like to go over some salmon. Oh. Okay, I like salmon. I like salmon, I like salmon too. I, I I don't know. I just I just appetizer fried gallon. Okay. I just want to get crazy, man. You know, I'm like you 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 write me a blank check. We don't get crazy up in here. No, <laughs> don't that. don't tell me I can don't don't give me a blank check and not expect me to spend it. Yeah, no, right. <laughs> like I said, that's the way it is. They 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 get to choose uh, what they get. Uh, there's been some crazy things. I know VJ Singh, who's from Fiji, had some Fijian cuisine. When he oh, cool. Won. Um, so there's been you know the different guys that have won around the oh, world. Yeah. Obviously, pick. You now, know, who gets invited to that? All the, past, just, all the past champions and then the oh. members of the best in national. So how do you – so who there. do you have to kill to be a member? Nah, you don't, <laughs> have, to, you don't have to kill it because you don't have to kill anyone. You just got to be invited by them. They're the most prestigious <laughs> golf club on the planet. You have to be invited by them, and you have to have <laughs> big time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> because if you guys don't know within i think within the last say three to four years they had their first female member yeah they, yeah it was yeah, you know, yeah. rice yeah yep. female member yeah. so um again so they're and but the funny thing is 
no matter who the CEO of IBM is, they're uh -huh. not a member because IBM sponsors yeah. the Masters every year. And I think at one time, one of their CEO was a female. So there was a female member before. They just didn't publicize it like they did when Miss Rice. Well, well, right. Well, uh, Miss Rice was the first invited right. female member. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yes. Absolutely. So, right. Well, guys, I know that that pours the hell out of you talking about golf. That's oh, no, I like talking oh, golf. No. I like yeah, that's no, 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 no. I just don't – I just can't watch golf. I love right. the game of golf. I adore playing golf. It's the most mm -hmm. challenging. I, if for a, an amateur athlete, I think golf is the most difficult, most frustrating, most irritating game that you can play because it looks so damn easy. All you do is you walk up to the ball, you hit the damn thing a couple hundred yards, you hit it again another 50 yards, you put it in the little hole. It's not that hard. And then you get out there and you got wind, you got trees, you got water. Who the hell put a pond in the middle of this what damn golf course? Are we fishing now? Yeah, nope. <laughs> I, no. You guys say hello, ball. I, <laughs> no, I, 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 you know, I agree. I, I've been playing that game, you know, for 32 yeah. years now. And yeah, I, I, what, what, what's that old joke? Uh, 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 golf is just a good walk ruined. Yes. <laughs> that would be great. That would, and I, mean, uh, I think, I think that's the draw. I think everybody, like you said, Adam, you know, it's, it looks so easy, but then does. out there, you it's realize not, it's not easy by any means. It's of the it just goes to show you guys that some things are not as easy as it looks. <laughs> right? There you go. That's I, do you, uh, so do you play 9 or 18, or do you you play 3 and go in? <laughs> I guess it depends on who you're playing golf with. Uh, no, I, you. you. Me uh, I meant you, sp you specifically. I played 36 in one day before. So uh, On, on, hey. a, on a, a typical round, do you play 18. 9, 18? 18 will be the okay. typical. Yeah, yeah. Unless, again, unless – the weather gets in the way, or you gotta, you gotta, we gotta wrap this thing. That type yeah, of thing. Yeah. But yeah, but usually normally eighteen. I was again, I was supposed to play this past weekend, but thanks to the damn hurricane that went through the state of Florida, washed Whoa. the golf course out. Oh uh, man! So I'm. I was gonna to, ask you, but I am playing. I am hitting range balls this weekend, so I know that's I'm, fun. That's fun. I like. So I doing, like going to the range and just. I go and I put fifty bucks on a on a on a. Like a 360 uh, count of balls and play all afternoon. Well, Probably. here's the thing: we, you know, we have Top Golf. I don't know if you guys know. Yeah, we got a Top Golf in Chattanooga. Okay. Do you have one, Lewis? Near you in New York? Do you have one in New Jersey? What you mean a Top Golf course or a major event? Well, well, no, a Top Top Golf. The the the. I guess you call it a golf a driving range thrown in with a bowling alley atmosphere because that's what it kind of is. Yeah, oh, it's like it's, it's like a party. We have some uh, golf courses out here in New Jersey. Okay. Well, you in New York, I the one that I like the um, the one that I want to play is the one where they just got done playing the U.S. Open a few years ago. Uh, uh, yeah. Should have gone. Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. That's right. I, I, uh, I played. Uh, I've played two courses, three courses so far. Um, nothing special. I played, I had where, where I lived back with my parents, we had a, um, a little 18. It was, it was a lot of, it was a fun little trick, tricky little course. Um, mm -hmm. it was one of, it was a Robert Jones signature. Oh, okay. so, so it was like based on one of his courses and then I played and, and that was, it was fun. It's challenging. Oh, okay. And then I played uh treetops up there too. And that was, that's, um, a, Arnold, I think it's an Arnold Palmer signature. If I'm not mistaken, Arnold, I think he create, I think he built the course. I think it was one of his. Is he built it in the in the in the seventies, I believe. And then I played one. I played a municipal course in uh, in Detroit. It was just a little. They the the city had put it together, and that was a that was an interesting course. And, the, and it's one of my favorite. Um, it was right before my grandpa got real sick and couldn't play anymore. And and we we went out and played uh, we played three or four games three or four rounds. Um, most of the time I play nine. I buy two beers, play nine, drink my beers, and call it a day. Because I, I try to. I used to play fourteen or eighteen with my buddies, 
And after yeah. nine, I'm like, I'm just not good at this game. I want to go inside and drink. <laughs> well, the other the other golf course, Sulu, is up in your neighborhood's Beth Page. Oh, God. I want to play at Beth Page, which is okay. Uh, that's in New York. Uh, yeah. Yes. But I mean, obviously, you know, Pebble Beach out in California is one of Oh, my yeah. That'd be, that'd be like a dream course to play. Um, Augusta is my dream 18, which. Oh, yeah. Unless this or my writing goes somewhere, it that's blows up. Uh, Augusta, you can't just go up there and play eighteen, right? No, you have to be a member, no. right? You can't just members only. Like, yeah, and I think their members only play about four or five months out of the year because they get the golf course ready for the tournament. Of course, and then if you're an employee yeah. there, you're an employee there. You get one day a year, one day oh, wow. a year to play. That's it. They only give you. Yeah, one day. I think I I had a buddy that at that worked at the at the course on Lexville North, and uh, he could play every day if he wanted. <laughs> sure. They were like, "Go play, have fun." Just yeah. When your chip was over, just anytime you want to come up and play, show them your members card and your your ID badge, and you can go play nine. Take a card. Well, that, Take two that, cards. That happened to me. I worked at a golf course for ten years, and I got to play two or three times a week. I right. That. I oh, I would have too. I'd have been, I'd have been better at golf. If I could have played two or three times a week. I took advantage of that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, gentlemen. So we'll go to the NHL now. Okay. The yeah. NHL is asking, could ask the players to defer salary next year. Now they yeah. obviously are not happy about that. No. Uh, oh. They're not happy about that, being that they just got out of the bubble. Um, right. That yes. obviously. Which basketball was the first. Obviously, it worked in Orlando, and then yep. they were in Canada, and then it worked in Bradenton for the WNBA. Right. Um, but I mean, I, I have to agree with them on this. I don't think I'd want to be taking a pay cut. No. So what your and then it okay. Me, it ba- before I let you guys get in here, it baffles me that the NHL NHL players take the most punishment of any athlete. And then yeah. get paid the least amount of money to do it compared to baseball. Now, again, I'm not comparing to football or anything like that, but to baseball, where you do almost nothing, but you get paid, you know, a hundred millions of dollars, where an average hockey player, what, makes twenty five million, a good contract is twenty five million a year. I don't even know what a good contract 25? is. Yeah. What is what is a good contract in the national? Fifteen. Fifteen. There you go. On a good day. Okay, um, you're you're gonna average average players making about five, five million. Okay, yeah, oh at God. the most, yeah. like an average. We're talking a middle, you know, a, a, not even a top six forward. We're talking like a, a bottom nine guy. He's gonna okay. make a, at most five. Oh. You, you're you're t- I think Crosby is making fifteen or eighteen, something like that. Maybe twenty. If they they're talking about them deferring twenty three percent. Now, what does that what does that entail? Does that mean they'll get that money later, or does that I, mean they're just not getting that money? I said, I'm getting it. Yeah, twenty three percent total. There are twenty six players who cannot defer twenty three percent of their company this season, even if all their salaries is deferred. Wow, that's so. Again, they're looking at twenty five million dollars in salary that will not be that they're trying to get back. I tell them to take a flying leap. Yeah, trying to recover yeah. their losses. That's what they're trying to do. In the end, they're trying to recover their losses from last I, year. I, I, I tell them to take a flying you-know-what at a rolling donut. Yeah, I agree with that. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I agree with that. I, I don't don't understand understand that. That, that, that's right. And if you're only, you know, I, I uh, – it's not like you know we're none of us are ever gonna make a million dollars and unless we print it off our home computer and that's illegal kids don't do that uh, <laughs> right. uh, home kids <laughs> yeah go to grandma's <laughs> well, come, on now. come on now come on now man this, this show could take off we could all be signing checks right hey, hey, hey. if the, if the show takes <laughs> off I will sign on the dotted line I, I'd, I'd be happy to sign I, if I, all right. I yeah. If I'm not saying off, man. It's 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 all it's three. It's split, split, being split three ways. It's not. Yeah, don't don't way. just don't leave me out in the cold. That's all I ask. No, I don't. I know <laughs> I can't do that because 
the show is getting more popular with you guys on here. So no, I would never do that. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um. Uh, but you know, even if you let's say you make five million dollars, mm-hmm. you know, you've got five million dollars. Like, okay, so I signed a contract in 2018 to make five million dollars over the course of the next six years on mm-hmm. average. I signed a thirty million dollar contract for a five year deal. I have spent, you know, this is me. I'm living. I, you know, we. I'm pretty sure we all live paycheck or paycheck to paycheck or mostly paycheck to paycheck, right. and, and so. I don't know if I could have the mentality to to bank the money so that mm-hmm. so that in the eventuality of something like this happened, I could defer twenty three percent. Like I would, you know, if I had five million dollars in the bank, I would spend like and as I was, you know, and especially like if I made five million dollars, I would spend like I made five million dollars. And now you want me to take a twenty three percent, ten percent of five million is is a half mil. Um, yeah. Twenty percent would be a million dollars, right? If I did the math right on right. the fly, so you're looking at like one point three million dollars. That's a lot of money. If I'm just, you know, if I'm, yeah. you know, I've got a house, I've got cars, I've got a wife, I got kids, I got kids. school. You the know, dog. I got, I got, I want to play golf. You know, then that doesn't, that doesn't come cheap. No, uh, no. I, I want that Augusta. I want that Augusta membership. That ain't cheap. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, and I'm. I worked my butt off, mm-hmm. you know, to, to earn this money. This is money that I've earned. This is not money. This is not money that I'm just being given. I am earning this money. I am yeah. doing work for you as an owner to put money in your pocket. You make, I make 5 million, you make 50 million. How about you defer some of your salary? Yeah. Yeah. That makes, that makes I'm going to roll tonight. No. I I agree with that. I I mean maybe it's time to, to have the the guys that are making the big bucks. Hey, or or if you do sure. that, so for example, you're making five five million, right? Yeah, yeah. Twenty three percent deferment. You guys only get ten percent deferment or five percent deferment instead mm-hmm. of because you can't yeah. you can't we do both- that to everybody. You can't. No, we both got to eat. So I, I, I'm, I understand. I understand. The owners have bills to pay just as much as anybody else. Right. And I'm not. I'm not. Say, I'm not trying to. You know. I'm not trying to hammer the owners. I get that. Everybody's got bills to pay. Everybody's got to eat. But you guys, you guys are making. And and I understand. It was a very, very, very tough year for everybody. Um. Mm-hmm. And I and I know that for the last thirty or forty, you know, I think the NHL played like some seventy games. So, you know, you lost out, they probably lost out on a several million, if not 20 or $30 million worth of ticket sales. I understand yeah. that. I understand yeah. that. But every single one of these owners is, is at least a hundred million, you know, has uh, hundreds of millions of dollars in the bank. Yeah. They're, they're capable of weathering a storm in my, in my humble opinion or unhumble opinion, as it were. No, no, no. I, I, yeah, I agree. I mean, I know the guy that Jeffrey Jeff Finnick that owns the Lightning is a billionaire. So right. there you go. So yeah, he's not. You know, hurt for money. I, I understand that a lot of a lot of billionaires, their assets are not liquid. They're they're all you no. Know, it's mostly properties and 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 you know getting the money back out of it. You have to you have to move assets, and, and it's not exactly like you can just go down to the bank and get a fifty million dollar you know take fifty million dollars out of the out of your account. I understand that, and I understand that. Everybody's struggling. Everybody's hurting. This has not been a happy, fun time for anybody. Right. But you're asking me, the frontline soldier, to take more bullets and get paid less. There you go. Yeah, that is true. I, uh, I, uh, yeah, I like I said. I mean, you know, and, you're, and, you're talking you know, about billions of dollars. I mean, for example, the arena, Emily Arena in Tampa, where the Lightning play. There's a Tree, uh, road that leads to Amway Arena called Channel Side Drive. He went into partnership with Bill Gates, who is another billionaire, as we all know. Um, right. You know, so they together are rebuilding and rebranding that area. Now, I don't know how it's doing because of COVID. I don't think they're having as many people as they thought they were going to. Yeah, of course not. So we'll see in the forthcoming future what that does. But I agree. I mean, why should you know, you, you if you are, you know, you are a soldier. Why are you taking more bullets when somebody else is, you know, you're not getting paid as much as that other guy is. So why? I, I, I agree. 
I don't think it should. I I don't know if the if the league will approve that. I don't think the PA will approve that. I, I cannot see the NHLPA no. approving that by any means of the imagination. Not that much. No, yeah, I was gonna say not that much. There's no way they're. Of course, of course, the, you know. And if you're if you know in business, you ask for more. You ask for twice what you want, and you settle for about half. Right. Yes. So yeah. so let's say that the the league really the the league really needs eight percent. So you ask for you ask for some outrageous, ridiculous sum, and then you know the PA goes, no, absolutely not. We'll give you four percent, and then they come down to fifteen, and they're like, and they're like, um, no, 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 no. We'll come up to seven, and the league goes, oh, well, how about nine? And they settle nine. Okay, we can do nine percent. We we can we can live with both sides feel like they're winning. Right. Okay. I mean, I, I think that'll probably be what will happen. I think they'll be back because, again, they, they, they continue to say the league is going to try to start on January 1st. So right. we'll, before, you know, next month, I'm sure yeah. that they'll be going back and forth with um, that as well. I don't, don't know know if, yeah. I don't know if you guys got a chance to see, but they do – they are going to have retro reverse jerseys this year in the this NHL. Terrible. Did, you, did you see them? Which ones? I got – I saw. I go ahead. I got the Jesus. I got the I the the show notes. I had them all in there, and I saw them all. Okay. The 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 wings jersey. What the who the what the? I have this is why this is why you don't. I'm gonna scroll down here. Hang on a second. I didn't see that one. Hang on. Well, I like the lightning one because it's the the lightning one was pretty cool. Original. But it's all blue instead of black. So yeah, that, the lightning one didn't suck. The 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 um the the the, the new New Jersey with the old school green and red that was atrocious. There's the Predators, Oilers. Where are they here? Montreal. The, the Wings were the last one in your in the show notes. It's the last jersey. I believe so. Yeah, okay. right at the right at the end. Yes, that's point. a touchdown. Oh, there it is. Okay. It is. Well, what? What? Why is it retro? Because it's white. Is that yeah. the reason that I, it's retro? Yeah, I think it's, it's white, white with a green with a light gray stripe on the arm. It looks stupid. And then it, the gray stripe is also on the bottom where you wouldn't see it anyway. Well, yeah, you would because they don't tuck their jerseys in. But yeah. Some, yeah, oh. it's, it's it's atrocious. I don't. This is just a ploy to sell new jerseys. That's all. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. There's go- nothing. Do you like the Avalanche one that they combine both the Avalanche and the Nordiques into one jersey? Did you see that? Uh, no. The yeah, Hartford one, one, the Carolina, yeah. the Panthers, Hartford missed it. The Hartford one was uh, was all right. I kind of like that one. That one was okay. Yeah. Because it seems like everybody likes the the Nordiques Avalanche one because of the combined colors. Uh, the the old school, they have the old school King jersey that's purple. But they gold. reversed it. They, yeah, yeah, they got the purple. And gold. It was originally it was originally purple and gold. Now it's gold and purple. I didn't like the purple and gold in the first place. The Coyotes went back to their old logo. That's their first first logo. That Coyote. Yeah, the original logo. The duck. So the Ducks didn't have the Duck logo, but they have the Mighty Duck from the cartoon. Okay. That's Flash. interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because it was the Mighty that made them sound silly. Yeah. Then yes. Pittsburgh only has Pittsburgh written across their jersey. The, That's blue, like- the Blues have the old red, the red and blue, but they flipped it around and make it now it's all red, which that's interesting. <laughs> There's the Devil's jersey. Yeah, that it looks like they look like they're in Christmas time. Yeah, yeah, it. those jerseys were horrid. Yeah, green and red. I like them. even though I don't really like them as a franchise. The Florida Panther logo, I like that old jumping Panther logo. Yeah, That's that cool. one. That one was snappy. I like that one. Yeah, cool. uh, They're bringing back Gordon Fisherman for the Islanders. Uh, yeah, so Carolina did go back with the Hartford Will. Or yeah, that one's all right. I don't hate that one. I I do I do hate it because it's not. Because they're they're not they haven't been the Hartford Whalers in like thirty five years now so I mean it's weird to me but whatever Calgary's got I like Calgary the the flaming horse I've yeah seen yeah those jerseys before they're all 
<laughs> yeah, that was their. That was one of they had that in the mid two thousands. Uh, third jersey. The Capitals is the old is the e is the bald eagle. That's pretty mm. cool. Yeah, that's their old. All right. One. The Sharks went and took their gray and made it all gray and took their that green that they have usually. Yeah. The teal. The Knights. <laughs> the Knights have. The two swords. I've seen that logo before, so that's nothing retro. I've seen I know, I've, it before. That's weird. How do you have a retro jersey for a team that's three years old? I was gonna say. There you go. Um, yeah, it's, it's all red, Lewis, and it's got yeah. swords crossing. It's got the two cross swords and on a, like a shield or something. I'm not yeah. sure. The first team I thought was Ottawa. I thought that was the Senators jerseys at first. I had and to then, double. I had, I had to yeah. check again, and it's like, oh wait, it's famous. and then. They can, the Canucks have their old logo with the whale jumping out of the water. At least they didn't do those god awful yellow and red and black jerseys. Remember those? <laughs> oh my god! The nineties and they played the Rangers. <laughs> yeah, that was yeah. the old Canucks jersey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Rangers one, Lewis, is the Statue of Liberty logo with the NYR underneath. I like that. No, I yeah, I thought that one was okay. That was one. That was one of my favorites. The Sabres have the two crossing swords. They went all white. I would their, rather. With I the, like their, their late 90s. My favorite Sabres jerseys are the late 90s with the uh, black. and. Uh, Sabres got a good draft pick. Or a, a new player that's coming. He, is a, he was a star in the uh, Ontario League. That's true. Yeah. Who well so, was his name? The Blue Jackets went back to their first logo, the CB yeah. with the J in the middle with the star. Right. Yeah. Do you know this? Yeah, I, the Predators stayed with their own logo. I don't know what the hell is so retro about that. Ooh. The Yahoos. Yeah. And it's in same thing with them. What did they do? They went back to white. That's all that yeah. is. Is they just went white instead of blue. The Blackhawks went back to the Chicago Blackhawks with the logo in the middle. Mm. Okay, that's nothing out of the ordinary. Agreed. Montreal went with a lighter blue. Then they started. So Flyers, the same thing. Nothing really changed there. Boston didn't change theirs. Toronto got more, did less stitching around the leaf. That's about it. And then Dallas, no, not really anything with them. They have that same logo that they had. That black jersey looks pretty cool, though, the one that they mm -hmm. brought out. Then the Ottawa Senators is basically their old logo. The Minnesota Wild went away from their red and green and went to yellow and green, which that looks kind of stupid. Winnipeg took out all their red and put gray in their jersey. That looks weird, too. Wow. And then, yeah, Detroit, I don't understand. Detroit, all they did was change their jersey to white. The Islanders went to their old dark blue NY. I don't know what changed in that. Oh, well. No, I don't there know. Good ones, some bad ones, I guess. But, yeah, you're right. It all comes down to money. <laughs> Just a oh, quick Seems to a, make money. A yeah. quick aside, if I – in ahead. the same vein, but a quick aside. Uh, you know uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets, you know how they got their name? No. Mm -mm. Have you ever heard that story? Okay. So, one – I was, of course, being a Red Wings fan, we were in the division for many, many – we were in the division together. And uh, Ken Kell was telling the story. Uh, what it was is during the American Civil War – the factory, the Blue Jackets factory for the for the Union soldiers was in Columbus, and so that's how they they used to make the Blue Jackets for the for the Union troops, uh -huh. and that's where the name oh. came from. There's no such thing as a Blue Jacket. There's yeah. and so the 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 Hornet thing is stupid, and that's why I like their their um their Confederate unit or their Civil War uniforms much better because okay. there's no such thing as a Blue Jacket. No, there's. <laughs> <laughs> I see it. you learned something new every day because I didn't know that's where they got their original name. From. Yeah, I, I, I have been for about a decade. Was like, what? Why are they? A, there's no such thing as a blue jacket. And right. uh, he just so they told the story on the air one night, and it was like, oh, okay, well that's interesting. Alrighty then. So again, you learn something new every day. That's awesome. Exactly. I did not, know that. did not know that. So we do have some announcement, guys, with the NCAA basketball. They are right. seeing a tournament in Indianapolis that would have the entire 68 team tournament in one location. Mm -hmm. uh, 
to me, guys, I think college basketball needs that this year. They didn't oh, have yeah. that last year. Absolutely. Absolutely. This year. Um, I, I think, you know, you're going to – obviously you're going to have the same protocol as you have now with what the NHL followed, NBA. Sure. Test, what, every couple of days, test the game day, test mm-hmm. half the game. You know, all that stuff is going to end up happening until there's a vaccine comes out, which I've heard rumors it's coming out. It's yeah. Whatever. So <laughs> that happens sooner or later. But right. I, I, I like that idea. I, I know I Coach know. A said something about that, that they needed that this year. Yeah. Um, he said, he said be yeah. challenging. But, you know, I mean, if it can work with the NBA and can work with the NHL, I don't see why it couldn't work with the um, – with the NCAA, and don't forget with the other, the other, but with the uh, the other tournament called the basketball tournament over the summer. I mean, the yeah, first yeah. along the way, but they managed to work out and finish the tournament. So I don't see why this should be any different. Okay, I could, I could see two. I could see a thirty two thirty uh, uh, two sites and do thirty four teams in, at two different sites instead of trying to cram sixty eight teams at one site. I think that's that's a, that's an option as well. Yeah. Or two. Well, um, so if, if one of them guys is in Indianapolis, where else would it be? Would it be on the West Coast? Would it be South? Where would it be? Maybe Dallas? Dallas? Okay. It, yeah. Okay. So you'd have 34 teams in Dallas. 34 teams in, in Indianapolis? Sure. No, I think it's a... I think it's a possibility. Yeah. Um, obviously, yeah. you want to try and keep it. You want to keep. You want to. You want to. You want to make it small, but yet have it be big enough where it can be where you can have. You know. Yeah. Uh, you, you. You know. I don't know what I'm trying to say now. I'm just gonna be quiet. Well, the the thing you that want, you don't want to cram it all in together. That's so, yeah, I think you're trying to. Make yeah. It. Yeah. It's, you want. You want to. You want to have a more. You want to spread them out so that everybody <laughs> isn't kind of on top of each other, and you're trying to. So that, and, and then of course you'd have the you you'd have the finals be in either Indy or Dallas, one or the other, probably Indy. Okay. Yeah. And so you don't have because obviously you can't do twelve different locations this in in March, no. where where like you normally would, and you have four teams, you know, and have eight teams, and and then you know of course, and then I think I think just I think you'd have. One one location for for the Midwest and East Coast, one location for the Southwest and West Coast, yeah. and you kind of and then you bring everybody together in those two locations. You have you know the season ends at in the middle of February. You have two weeks off. Everybody goes to the to their designated location. You have the testing, and then you start the tournament. You do your tournament, and then it, you know at the end when every, when all the games are played, then you'll bring the two sides. The both teams come together. Maybe you meet in St. Louis. And you do your final four in St. Louis. Uh-huh. Yeah, I like that. How how do you how can you schedule it all if they're all going to play in one location? Because you got sixty eight teams. You know how right. do you get it all in? Because it's sixty eight. So, well, I was I was going to say that too. Unless you have multiple courts at that at that. Yeah, point. you'd have to have multiple yeah, courts. Yeah, right. right. Multiple. You'd have to be playing okay. more than one game at a time. You'd be playing two or three games at a time. Easy. Right. Yeah. Okay. I, That's I like the only way. I like. That would be cool. You say you do Indy and Dallas, and you do a championship in St. Louis. That would be fine. I'm sure yeah. the St. Louis would love that. So right. yeah, I, I can't see why that would be an issue moving forward. I just think I just I we missed need, it last year, so I hope yeah. they. I, I really did yeah. last year. I did too. I mean, here's here's the question that I always I always ask. And I don't think it's ever going to happen because you're not going to have 64 teams anyway. But what if they did something like that in college football? I mean, not they never have to, happen. Never happen. No, I know it'll never happen. It'll it will never happen. It unfortunately cool. for it, the, the the reason why it can't happen in basketball or in football is the the la, the a football game is so much harder to play than a basketball game. True. Um, the logistic you know the logistics of a full football game, you know, a basketball game. You can have multiple basketball games going on at once. You can play two. You can play three, 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 two games in three nights. You can play three games in four nights. Yeah. With football, you can't play three or four games in in a in a week. No. No. I could I could see a maybe a a twenty four team playoff where you've got you've got four weeks of playoff games, and every game every team plays you know. You have a single elimination, 
and you start with 24 and then you go down to 16 and then you go down to eight and then you go down to your final four and you know, you, you, through the month of December, you know, your last, you have your conference championship game and then you have your, your 20 round of 24, round of 16, round of eight, round of four. That That's the only way I could see. And then, you know, of course you, the last game, the championship game, the second week in, in January. Mm-hmm. That's that's what I that's right. the only I could okay. that's that's about the best I could do and then you have you, you take those twenty four okay. you right. twenty four well, bowl I mean, games. Yes, I could say okay. so. Well, speaking of college, I guess speaking of college football, um, hmm. did you guys hear the whole thing about what's going on at LSU it's with their fire. sexual assault allegations? Right. Yeah, yeah, that's been that's been brewing um, for it's a while. Yeah, that's this broke they back back in late August. It said something about the coach O should be fired. That should be the first step. Of yeah, him. and it had to do with Darius Geis, who I believe is in the NFL. Is he in the NFL? No, he's gone. Mm. Okay. He got no. cut by the skins after the uh, after the assault allegation. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Or, I mean, the football team. I mean, the football right. team. <laughs> no, you could say the Redskins. That, that doesn't bother me. Right. Yeah. We, we, we get fine for that. We get fine for it. So that, that's fine. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I'm just uh, here so I don't get fined. <laughs> right. So, so, obviously, this has been brewing for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Now, yes. if Ogeron gets fired, I mean, obviously, they won a national championship a year ago. We all know that. Um, there's another team in the SEC that now can't beat Alabama, so that's yeah. not good. that's you know that's their comp that's their side of the conference too. So okay, uh, okay. Well, I, yeah. You know what? If they have a, if they have a they have issues, well then guess what? He deserves to be fired. If he covered yep. it up, he deserves yep. to be fired. I mean, hands down. You know, you yep. can't. You can't. There, there's nothing in the world that you can condemn that with, you know, and say, "Oh, it's okay." No, it's not okay. No, it's so, not okay. It's not and, okay. and the problem, the problem is, is that you know they didn't follow through on the investigation. Okay. You know, okay. Um, everyone deserves their day in court. You know, Correct. if he didn't, if, if guys didn't do anything else. wrong, he Correct. deserves to be exonerated for it. And if he committed crimes, he deserves to be punished for them. Um, right. And that's the thing. That's the thing that I was just reading the show notes is like looking at them. And it's like you know, just because he was accused doesn't mean he's guilty. That's why we need to have. That's why these things need to go through a proper investigation, and, and be investigated by investigators, people that actually have gone to school to learn how to do investigations, mm-hmm. so that proper punishment can be administered. Yes, I agree. I he, he doesn't. He, he doesn't need to have his, his his career ruined because somebody lied, and he doesn't deserve to have a great career because somebody because somebody ignored his the crimes that he was committing. Covered it up. Yep. yep. I I agree with that. So guys, hey, now we'll, we'll we'll jump into the ranking part of it. Now again, nothing really changed other than I think number name up to two. Number two would be the only yeah. change. Um, yeah. Bama, Notre Dame, Ohio State, Clemson. I still, and again, I love that they're at number five, but I don't know if they deserve to be there because the team that's at six beat them face to face. So I don't know why, how Texas A&M is behind Florida, but right. because they beat Georgia, I don't know. And then you have Cincinnati, BYU. No, oh, wait, Cincinnati's not going to get you. Well, Cincinnati plays UCF this week. Uh, BYU, Wisconsin, Cincinnati. Oregon, Georgia are the top. Indiana. Indiana's got a big game against Ohio State, Miami, right. Oklahoma, Coastal Carolina, Iowa mm-hmm. State, USC, Liberty, North Carolina, Northwestern, Marshall, Texas, Auburn, and Louisiana. Round out and their top. game got canceled. So, yeah. yeah. Um, Cincinnati. If Cincinnati, Cincinnati needs a lot of help. Oh no! They yeah, need, they're not. yeah, 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 yeah. They're, yeah there's that, not enough. Cincinnati would need uh, would need pretty much everybody in the top five to have two losses. <laughs> Yeah, yep. To to mm-hmm. be to be able to be in consideration, they need Ohio State to have two losses. Um, they need Wisconsin to have two losses. I mean, there's just too many teams behind them that that it haven't played enough games yet. That I just don't see them. I don't see them making a move. 
Was there any any of the games, guys, from this past weekend jump out at you with any surprise in week 11 of the college football season? No, no, no. I, I, I crawled in a bottle at 8.30, and I didn't come out until 12. You messed with me this time, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I did. You messaged I was out. me this time around. I didn't message yeah. you. You messaged me. No, I no, know. I did. I did. I did. I did. I, I did. It was, it, it was embarrassing. At home, on prime time, that, that was incredibly disappointing. I was like, I, it was my buddy's bachelor party, so we took him to Dave and Buster's. Okay. Um, and uh, if you get a chance, I, 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 I love Dave and Buster's. If you like playing video games and hanging out and drinking beer, it's a great time. Right. Uh, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't watch. I watched it, but I didn't really watch it. It was. Yeah. It was over by halftime. Um, yeah, I I think uh, I don't even know what to do at this point <laughs> because I I don't know I don't even know if you can blow it up and start over yet. I don't even know if you can blow it up and start over. No. Um, no. Even if you, I I still this is if I were if I were AD I would go ahead and I I would I hope I don't want to pay him to leave. I don't want to fire him because you're gonna to have to pay him. But um, if 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 he leaves or if you get rid of him, I I think Les Miles is your head coach. Uh, okay. Jim McElwainy as your offensive coordinator. Will Muschamp as your defensive coordinator. Uh, I I know he just got fired at and out of South Carolina on Will Monday. Muschamp? Will Muschamp. <laughs> um and, and i i think there are some guys that are great coordinators and that's all they'll ever be and i think will Muschamp falls into that category i think uh and then I'd, I'd love to bring mike hart back as your as a running backs coach um then braylon edwards is your wide receivers coach Good wide receiver. um yeah uh you know you got that michigan connection with those two and then I was thinking um, Donovan McNabb as your quarter. I, well, originally, I was thinking um, mm. Brian Greasy as your quarterback's coach. Yeah. And then it was pointed out that he's on Monday Night Football. And would he want to leave Monday Night Football? I was like, oh, maybe not. Probably not. I don't know. So I was thinking, well, I was trying to think. I was I was thinking Cole McCoy was the first name that popped in my head. Great college quarterback. Texas connection. Texas, you know, yeah. you can, you know, it's going to help in recruiting. You know, help recruiting in Texas. It's going to help recruiting in Arizona. Now he's he's backing up and wa- he's on the Washington uh, roster right now. Mm-hmm. Does he is he? Do you give him a call and say, hey, you know, do you want to retire? You know, what are your plans for next year? Uh, he says no. Okay, we'll go Donovan McNabb, uh, Dante Culpepper. There, there's there's some good names out there that I would be interested in entertaining. Um, offensive line, I would go um, John Jansen. He's a great offensive lineman at Michigan. Was was it was there when they won the title in '97? Uh, been a a forward, a stalwart of the of the university for the better part of ten years. I think he would be a great fit as an offensive line coach. Defensive line, I was thinking, you know, flipping the ball, and yeah, you you've got Will Muschamp as your defensive coordinator. I would bring Warren Sapp in to be my defensive line coach. Um, I I. I think he's one of the best defensive linemen to have ever played the game relatively young you know uh didn't he play at miami yes he did you yes. know so you got that florida connection yeah, um i was thinking larry foot for your linebackers coach i knew uh, former Steeler. i know he was a, a, a former michigan guy you know they're michigan guy mm-hmm. um i would bring in charles woodson to, to do my corners and i was thinking brian dawkins for your free safety you kind of you know, so you have you know you got that both positions have because each position plays so incredibly differently, right. um, and then special teams I'd like to have Steve Brest as my turn coach, and uh, there's a punter and I cannot remember his name and I forgot to look it up I know I'm so prepared, um, but he punted for uh, New Orleans uh, New England four or five years ago and I cannot remember his name. Yeah, but he. He's a great punter at Michigan, and then of course you need a special team. You need a special teams coordinator, and I'm not sure you know somebody. There's a special teams coordinator out there. I mean, that would be my dream staff. You think Mac Wayne would leave his coaching job and become offensive coordinator at Michigan? Do you? I mean, do you? Do you think he would leave that position to? Maybe it's okay. it's it is Central Michigan. If he's angling for a bigger, better job, 
the the offensive coordinator position at Michigan is a stepping stone. Did they win last night or did Western? No, Michigan? they they lost. No. They lost to Western. They lost to Western. Came they, they, okay. That defense needs help. They gave up fifty two points. Oh, wow. the offense looked fantastic. <laughs> okay. The offense was the only thing that kept them in that game. Uh, okay. It was like fifty two forty four was the final. Oh, so it was a close I game. Remember right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it I guess, was. I guess, guys, the big game this week is Ohio State Indiana. That's it. Bedlam. Bedlam. Um, OU and uh, Ohio, uh, Oklahoma State. That's a big one. Big one there. I, um, I don't think. Well, Cincinnati UCF. I would say that's a big one. Um, this week. Mm-hmm. Um, if Cincinnati, Cincinnati, of course, they've got to run the table. So yeah. Yeah. That, that's that's a huge game. Um, it's a uh, it's a national showcase game. Auburn Tennessee. That's kind of a rivalry game between those a little bit. Yeah. Um, USC Utah. That should be a good football. That game. That should be a good football game. Yep. Uh, Tech in Miami. Miami should be able to handle that. I would believe. Nice good. Yeah. Uh, I know, again, I was supposed to be at the USF game on Saturday, but unfortunately I will not be because the game got canceled because of COVID-related issues for USF, so no game. So I'm praying to the football gods that I get to go to the UCF game next Friday. So That would be a good one. Fingers. Yeah, we'll get They're going to get killed. USF's going to get murdered, but I would like to go to the game. Just yeah. so that I experienced a UCF USF game in person. If you know it's gonna be that bad, why are you gonna go? Well, I get I get credentials and I get everything for free, so that's another reason why. That's a pretty good reason. <laughs> yeah, I free go. Parking, free food, free drinks. I don't have to pay for anything. Free, so beer. free beer. There's only two good kinds of beer: free and free light. Mm. All right, so, so again, guys, so that's nothing really. I mean, do you see do you see Indiana upsetting Ohio State? Is, is there an opportunity for that to happen, no. or no? No, no. no I don't think Ohio State's gonna. I don't think it's gonna be a blow. I don't think Ohio State's gonna crush them, but I don't think I. I don't think anything's gonna enough to win. Okay. Yeah. It all depends on how uh, um their quarter this quarterback play. Like always, it always comes down yeah. to quarterback play. All right, gentlemen. Then we will jump to pro football, and of course, yeah. You know, yeah. Me down here in the Tampa Bay area, we have Antonio Brown with a surfacing thing, breaking a camera in a gated community outside of Hollywood, Florida. This is prior to the Bucks signing him. The NFL is reviewing the case. Um, what is going to happen? Does he if he gets suspended? I think Nothing. Cut him. That's what I heard. That I think what the yeah. there, that, that I've heard. I heard. One of the writers from Timber Bay Times, the local newspaper here in, in Florida, he said they're going to go under the rug. He goes, "Don't be surprised if it's just well under the rug. Uh, that's it." From what I've heard, is that what happened was the um, the homeowners association decided not to press charges. Right. Um, he, he he agreed to pay for all the damages. Yeah. I guess he had an episode. He agreed to pay for all the damages and. As far as I'm concerned, it's much ado about nothing. Okay. I mean, in compared to all the other stuff he's accused of doing, you know, he's gonna yeah. he's gonna make it go. You know, if, my, if it was if it was me, my camera say, "Oh, I'm sorry, my bad. Here's the money to fix it." I'd be like, "Yeah, yeah all right, whatever. It happens. Just don't let it happen again." Uh huh. Well, yeah. I mean, like- that, that's that's the thing right there. I mean, you hit the nail on the head on that one. Is don't let it happen again because this is your. Fourth opportunity that you've gotten. Remember, you we're know. talking to Brown here, right? Yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. But I'm just, I'm just saying that to me, this this doesn't scream of needing to be let go or anything. Um, I, it's a situation that I will monitor closely, and if any further anything further develops, we will reconvene and uh, discuss yeah. further options at that time. Yeah. Okay. Okay, guys. So we'll go ahead and review last week's games. Anything, guys, jump out at you for the. Arizona. Uh, Arizona. Was that the surprise this past week? Uh, not really a surprise, but it just – I this is, you know, there's – Kyler Murray made a throw, and DeAndre Hopkins went up and got it. The noblest of nights have – Yeah. Sorry, I got to add doing there. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. 
that was a heck of a hail mary uh, right team to beat buffalo a good a good well, buffalo it was yeah yeah it's not called a hail murray instead of a hail mary there you yeah. go there you go. Yeah. Uh, uh, although they I, trail right now. I you know, the game that, that surprised me, I would have to say would be the Patriots game. Um, yeah, yeah, that I caught me by surprise. Shocked. I can say I was shocked about that because I didn't think that they would be able to hang with Baltimore. And really I mean, did I. but you beat them. Yeah. yeah, I didn't I was very surprised on Sunday night to see that happen in yeah. all honesty. In all honesty, that was the game that surprised me. Uh, the Dolphins stay winning two as undefeated as a starter. Yep. Um, the Monday night game was okay. Minnesota and Chicago, that game was back and forth. I know yes. uh, I asleep. Nick, Foles, Nick Foles got hurt at the end of the game. Uh, that, yep, he got hurt. Uh, they said he's going to be uh, – he said he's day-to-day, but they're in their bye week, so they're expecting him to be back. Well, how about Drew Brees getting three broken oh. ribs? Oh, five. Yeah, five broken ribs total. And I a guess, punctured lung. I guess Lewis, he oh. suffered two. I guess he suffered two of those broken ribs against the Bucks. So yeah. he was playing with two broken ribs already, and then he got the other three on the other side broken. So yeah, I think I found and, the one of the month for my show. And a, and a punctured lung. Yeah, oh. so, yeah, and a punctured lung on top of that. Yeah. Oh. I thought that the requ- I thought the minimum was to be out uh, three games with those kind of injuries, and he's only going to be out. They said like two. I thought the minimum was three. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's that's a good question. That, that's a good question. Um, yeah. But then again, see, there's the funny thing. Now I was listening to local radio here this morning, and wouldn't it be funny that Jameis Winston ends up screwing the Bucks out of an NFC South? Championship, mm-hmm. yeah, wouldn't that be funny if he's the starting quarterback for the Saints and they end up winning the division and he screws the Bucks again? But he has the last five years. Wouldn't that be par for the course? Yeah. Throw up. Don't be surprised that doesn't happen. Do not be surprised. No, I won't be. If that happens. so, let's look, guys. We'll, we'll look at the at this week's games. We have uh, Tennessee at Baltimore. It's the one o'clock. I'll game take Baltimore. Baltimore. Maybe. Okay. Uh, we have Detroit at Carolina. Teddy Bridgewater Detroit. for that game. Okay. Lions. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we have Philly at Cleveland. Cleveland. Browns. 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 Okay. Uh, New England is at Houston this week. New England. I'm going to go with Houston. Go well, Houston. Okay. Uh, we have a good game at 425 between Green Bay and Indianapolis. That should be a good one. I'm gonna go Indy. Indy, okay. Here's okay. Uh, we have the undefeated Steelers against the one-win Jacksonville Jaguars. Steelers, but watch that game be a loss. <laughs> okay. A no right. Steelers, a no-brainer. Um, yeah, Indy, that's the problem. You have Atlanta at the Saints at the Super Bowl. Atlanta Saints, uh, New Orleans. Mm, Saints. Mm. Yeah. yeah, as long as Winston doesn't, you know, do his Winston thing, Saints. <laughs> Which is why uh, we have so, Cincinnati at Washington. Cincinnati at Washington, a uh, tie. That will give that oh, will right. give the Bengals their second tie of the year. <laughs> I'll go the Bengals. Bengals, okay. Yeah, I think I think uh, Bengals. Yeah. The next game, guys, is Dallas at Minnesota. Minnesota. Cowboys. Here's a good here's a good game on the Sunday night game is Kansas City at Las Vegas. That's a good football game. Ooh. The Raiders. Vegas already got them once. Yep. I'm gonna go Kansas City. Kansas City, okay. Revenge. I don't think light I don't think lightning strikes twice. No, revenge, revenge game right here. Yeah. Okay. Um then you have the Dolphins traveling to Denver to play the Broncos. Dolphins. The fish. Dolphins. Okay. The fish. You have the Jets on the road in SoFi Stadium to play the Los Angeles Chargers. Does the Jets get their first win? No. Chargers. Chargers, okay. They haven't won a game. Of course, they won a game all season, but on the road, they play much worse than they do at home. At home? Okay. I don't want to, but I have to. 
yeah. and the Monday night game, guys, is in my backyard. That will be the Los Angeles Rams on the road against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tom Brady. A tough one. Uh, I'm going to go with Tampa, but it really depends on which Jared Goff shows up. They were talking about that. On the radio. Yeah. yeah. They were talking about that on the, on the radio this morning about if, if he that- shows up, it's going to be hard. And if they don't have – if the Bucks don't have Ali Marpet, when you have mm. Errol Donald, you know, yeah, that's going to be yeah. tough. No way, it's going to be in your backyard. Now, how do we get there if we want to see if we want to uh, do the game? So, uh. <laughs> Yeah, well, maybe not literally in his backyard, but oh, I, get I, I, I'm 25 minutes from the stadium, so I'm not far away with traffic. So not, so not a literal sense, but close enough. <laughs> True. True. In his backyard. True. That would be cool. That would be cool. That would be cool. That would be cool. In the stadium, in my backyard. That would be. Is he rushing from my house? No. <laughs> All right, now you said, did you say Rams or Yams? I forgot. <laughs> I did say Rams, but you can Ram. say we we're getting closer to Thanksgiving. So yeah, yeah. Okay. I, was, I was saying, no, the, the, the Yams play on Thursday. <laughs> I said the Yams. Yeah. 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 <laughs> well, uh, you know, too, speaking of the WWE, they're moving their Thunderdome to the original Thunderdome at – Tropicana Fields. Really? They're going to be doing their paper, their show from Tropicana Field. Yep. That's agreed upon today. So. We don't need a hero Thunderdome. Yeah. Uh, Real quick. I, uh, this is just because I like doing power rankings. Okay. Um, I'm going to run through this real quick and you tell me how, how wrong I am. Number one, I, I, I debated this was a, it was really tough, uh, but I got Pittsburgh at one. Numbers don't lie. Nope. Uh, they're nine. You're only as good as your record says you are. Nine and zero. Oh, New England or Pittsburgh number one. Number yeah. two, I got Kansas City. Yes. Um. Uh. They, you know, of course, numbers don't lie. Eight and one. You can't hardly argue with it. No, no, no. Um. And this is the one. This is. I'm going out on a limb here, uh, and and it's based on last year. Uh, everyone called me crazy for putting San Francisco so high so early. And we said, oh, you're, you're nuts. They're, they're, they're not that good. And, and then they went to the Super Bowl. I got Miami at three right now. Okay. Um, I, know, I know it's a little bit out there, but I really like the trajectory of the Dolphins. Their defense is playing well. Tua is playing great. Um, I, I don't know. I don't trust the Packers. Uh, and then Drew Brees with his injuries. If he, if he can't come back in, in two weeks, I don't, I don't, I don't like the Saints anymore. Uh, even though they've got a really good defense, Alvin Kamara, Jameis Winston is a turnover machine, and they can quickly spiral out of control. At four, I have Green Bay, um, and then I have at five, I have uh, New Orleans. Again, okay. you know, New Orleans would have been um, if Breeze was still uh, healthy, I probably would have had New Orleans three, but Miami five, yeah. uh, six. I've got Seattle, and of course, they're winning tonight. Um, they're up 16 at the or 16 7 at the half. Yeah. Uh, Baltimore at seven after the loss to New England in a in a bad weather game. Um, when they got scored on by the by the wide receiver who threw a touchdown pass, it was a dime. Uh, I mean, you know, it's it's uh, eight. I've got Arizona. Obviously, maybe there's a little premature. Maybe I should have backed off Arizona. They look a little rough, but I liked what they did last week. Uh, nine. I've got Tampa Bay. Um, I think that's it. Maybe I had them as a preseason Super Bowl pick. I yeah. like the schedule. I thought the schedule was very favorable outside of the two New Orleans games. I thought the schedule was very, very favorable. Uh, 10, I've got the Raiders, uh, the Las Vegas Raiders. I think the Vegas was a great fit for the Raiders to move the Raiders to Vegas. I think it's going to work great. I yeah. like where they're going this week. Is a, this is going to be a tell all week? 11, I've got Indy. Um, they're, they're, I, I like their, tra- again, I, I like their trajectory 12. I've got Buffalo. Uh, may, is that too low? Is it too high? Is it too low? I, think. I, I yeah, that. but I couldn't, I couldn't really put, I couldn't really put them above, um, uh, Las Vegas, you know, because Vegas did okay, beat okay. Kansas city. Um, I didn't think they were better than Tampa Bay. I, I think that they, I think that they're right in that. I think that's fair. Maybe a little low. You can, that's always, you know, movable. Uh, the Rams, I have them at 13. 
maybe a little high, maybe a little low, but I think 13 is pretty fair. Cleveland, I got at 14. Uh, I like Cleveland. Uh, as long as Baker Mayfield doesn't, you know, crap the bed, they'll be good. Uh, yeah. Tennessee, I got Tennessee at 15. Yes. Um, that's I think that's fair. I, they, you know, with the loss to Indy last week and looking bad on Thursday night, uh, then I've got New England at 16, uh, maybe a little high, but I, the reason I did this is because I wanted to put the NFC North all together because I think they're pretty, they're a pretty terrible group right now. So I got Minnesota at 17, Chicago at 18, Detroit at 19. Um, I believe they're all four and five, or uh, I think Minnesota and uh, Detroit are four and five, and uh, Chicago is five and four. Yeah. yeah. Um, then. Uh, Philly at 20, Dallas at 21, mm-hmm. and Carolina at 22. Um, it's very weird to have a division leader in the 20s, but that division is terrible. Uh, uh, Atlanta at 23, San Francisco, Denver, and, and the Chargers at uh, 24, 25, 26. Uh, again, all interchangeable. I don't think there's anything. There's really – there's no – they're all pretty bad. They're neither. None of them are pretty good. So you can move those all around. Uh, the Giants at twenty-seven, Houston at twenty-eight. Uh, I put Houston. I put Houston below New York because Houston is a dumpster fire this year. They've got a lot of things to fix in the off season. They got to find a receiver. They need some offensive line help, and they've got to shore up that defense. Washington at twenty-eight, Cincinnati at thirty, Jacksonville at thirty-one, and the Giants bringing up the rear at thirty-two. And uh, if Alabama keeps playing like this, uh, they may overtake the Jets. They might. I kid, I kid. <laughs> and that's my list. Yeah. No, I, I have no problem with that list at all. Well, actually, they're going to realignment. They got the Jets playing college football, and they, and they have uh, Alabama playing to play the Jets in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like they do in European <laughs> soccer. <laughs> no. Uh, well, I mean, we're gonna get ready to get off here, guys. Got any yeah, yeah. Thoughts that you guys want to get in here before we get off here? Um, no, just to wish uh, you guys a happy Thanksgiving. Since uh, Same to you. there's a look. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully, you know. So I hope it all goes well wherever you're gonna be and whatnot. You know, just making a good one and making a safe one. Always. Yeah. Same yeah. way. Same yeah. with you. Yeah. yeah. Save me a drumstick if you can. Oh boy. <laughs> All right. I got I got ham. I'll save you a ham slice. All right, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. Is that it? Everybody I, so I assume there's no show next week, correct? Correct. I am actually taking the entire week off next week, except for my Tuesday show. Because I wouldn't no. be able to, I wouldn't be able to join anyway. I I well, you can call can, that show if you want, Lewis. If you want to, that's not. I don't run that show. I'm not the main host. I'm a co-host on that show. So, which one? Unless you, unless you know about USF athletics, it's going to be one of those like, oh, I don't, you know, I don't oh, feel comfortable right. here. All right. Yeah, it's all USF. That's um. Now, what time is that? Seven. Nine o'clock. We're on at nine. Right. Usually nine to ten, and we've had. The cool thing about that show is he's gotten a lot of good ex Bulls players. We have Matt Grothy on. We've had, you know, Santiago Gramatica. We've had, you know, oh. a lot of the big college basketball players that played at USF. Send me the link. Maybe I'll join. Maybe yeah, I'll, I'll send you the link. Yeah, I'll get. I'll get it because he sends it to me. I'll send it over to you guys if you guys want to okay. watch that show. You know, you're yeah. more than welcome to. He right. he's been praising for us to go out and. You know, get everyone, especially in where we live, where I live in Tampa Bay, to yeah. stop being Gator, Knowles, and Hurricane fans and start becoming a USF fan. So he's trying to push that. Yeah. Uh, easier said than done. I mean, yeah, you, know, right. you know, that's that's the way it is. Um, oh. I'll always be a Gator first. So it, it, it's that. just that way. You know, it's just that way. But um, yeah. that's what he's trying to push on that show. And we've done pretty well. Our numbers are going up. We're getting a lot of USF, uh, you know, radio stations and stuff down here that have, you know, started to spread the word about our show. So we're starting to get some quite a little bit amongst the USF yeah. crowd, as you might want to call it. Um, oh, but I, I've been, I, 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 
there's a post on Facebook where they're selling tickets for next Friday's game. And everybody's like, why would you want to go to a game when they're going to get blown out? I said, well, I don't know. Why would you pay for a ticket? But if you go for free, what do you, you know, there's nothing wrong with that in my picture. You know, my book, right. nothing wrong with that at all. Right. So, Have a good night, to- Lewis. Yep. All right, buddy. I'm going to go ahead and roll through my Yeah, spot. go ahead and wrap the show. All right, buddy. Um, again, guys, uh, the sun, uh, geez, Sunshine State Regard. That's, that's my Monday show. The Walker we'll, Report is We'll be part back of, next uh, Monday. Yeah, next Monday. <laughs> uh, part of In The Zone Sports Talk Radio. If you want to get uh, in the zone gear, guys, head over to squadlocker.com. Type in In The Zone Sports Talk Radio. The website will present itself, and you can order zone gear. The holidays are coming. Buy some for your family and friends. And support the zone gear. Guys, I my uh, sponsor is creating zenspaces.com. I have my friend who I've known since high school runs that. She's been sponsoring me since I started doing podcasting. So I have to thank her for doing that. And also, guys, to BB Graphics, that's my new sponsor, BB Graphics and more. Again, guys, they customize in tumblers, coffee mugs, t shirts, vinyls. Uh, again, mention me, get 10% off your order. There are two ways to order. Either contact them on Facebook at BB Graphics and More, or you can email them at BB Graphics and More at gmail.com. But with that, guys, I want to say thank you again to Adam and Lewis for joining me every week. It has been awesome. The last two weeks we've been doing this format. Um, it's going to continue that way because I think it's, it's, it's so I, much fun. Me and Adam were talking off the air. Um, it's, been so much better. Our numbers are up, you know, everywhere that I've seen. So thank you guys, you know, for coming on and, and helping me out to, to get that up, to get those numbers up. Um, again, guys, there will not be a show next week because of Thanksgiving. I am taking the whole week off. I'm not even writing next week. It'll be nice to, sure. not to have, not to are have. Are we not going to, not going to do a special show on Friday night then? I might, bud. I might. If, if Let me know. Cause I'm down. Okay. I'm, I'm game to do a show on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Uh, I ain't gotten. <laughs> yeah, the game bud kicks off at three thirty on Friday night. Okay, so I should be home. So okay. you gotta do. It. Yeah, we can discuss this off the air. So you gotta do your yeah. your outro and. But then, guys, all right. So again, this has been the Walker Report, part of In the Zone Sports Radio. Um, before I go, as I always do before when I make my closing statements. I want to thank the uh, doctors and nurses and essential workers are the true heroes through the pandemic. Thank you guys for doing all that you've done, all your sacrifice. Uh, to the men and women of our armed services, both active, retired, and the ones who have left us, thank you for your sacrifices. I would not be able to talk to this microphone in front of me three days a week if it wasn't for your sacrifice. So thank you for that. Also, guys, to our domestic soldiers, our police officers, firefighters, and paramedics, thank you for keeping us safe domestically and everybody out there. I said, it won't be a show next week. If you are in the U S happy Thanksgiving to all you guys, everyone have a safe one uh, next week. Uh, I, again, there will not be this show next week. There won't be any sunshine state sports chapter next week either, as I'm taking the week off to recharge and get ready for the month of December. Cause I cannot believe we're in December already. I can't believe it either. Uh, how fast the year has gone by. It's not been a very good year for a lot of people. Um, but there have been a few pe- few humble people out there. I'm one of the few that's very humble for what's happened to me this year. Um, I'm very grateful. Prayers to everyone who's been affected by Corona, whether you've washed your job, house, whatever. Praise, you know, prayers for you guys, everyone that's been affected by the virus. Either they've had it or have had a family member that's had it. Prayers from all of us here. You know, that everyone, everything gets better in 2021. Um but at the end of the day, guys, thank you very much for coming on here. Even if you were on here for just a few seconds, thank you for coming on and, and hanging out with us, letting us talk sports for, you know, the two hours we're on here every week. Uh, until then, guys, everyone have a safe week, safe weekend. I'll see you guys. I guess the first will be the first Thursday. No, I have one more Thursday in the month of November before we end, we end the month. So, um, or no, do we? No, we no. don't. No, we don't. No. No. So it'll be, it'll be December, the first Thursday in Thursday December. December. The three yep. of us will be back live on here again, and we'll be talking about, I'm sure, maybe yeah, two the, weeks to cover. <laughs> yeah, two weeks of, of stuff to cover. The NBA would have already started their preseason game, so that'll be pretty cool to be talking about. But then again, yep. guys, thank you. I love every one of you listeners, followers. Thank you for making this awesome on Thursday night. And until I see you guys next, 
Stay safe out there. Wear your mask. Follow your state guideline rules. I don't want to go into a shutdown before Christmas because that will suck big time. Everyone stay safe. And this is the Sports Serve Brad Walker reporting. Peace. Don't forget to subscribe to the Democratic Network for great more content like this one.